testing the microphone real quick. Oh, see, yo, y'all can hear me, right? We loud and clear? Uh, let me see some feathers or some turtles, some bow and arrows. You know, just let me know if everything good um, with the microphone right now. Does it sound good? OCO, free thinkers. OCO, everyone. We good? OCO, Niji. You finally made a live. I appreciate you being here. So we good? Okay. Excellent, excellent. We got a heavy hitter this time. Let me real quick make sure everything's straight on my side real quick, y'all. Okay, yeah, we good. I ain't want y'all to hear all that feedback. So who we got in the house this evening? Who we got in the house? Boston in the building, I see you. Sacramento, California in the building. Much gratitude, Chief, I appreciate you, DJ Divine Rising, how you? OCO. OCO Levante, I believe I saw you in here earlier. Hold up, wait a minute, I don't want y'all to hear that feedback. Let me turn that down. Okay. All right, that's done. All right. Alabama in the building. Coca Florida in the building. Uh, Long Beach, Cali in the building. Philly in the building. Austin, Texas in the building. South Carolina in the building. North Carolina in the building. 305 in my yayo in the building. Flatbush, Brooklyn in the house. Uh, Clearwater, Florida. What up, Florida? Philly in the house, Virginia Beach in the house, Nashville, uh, Flint, Michigan in the house, what up, Flint? Mississippi in the house, Etowah River, Georgia in the house, what up? Chicago in the building, Louisville, Kentucky back in the building, I see you. Macon, Georgia in the building, yeah, Chicago definitely in the building, I see you, Alabama. What up, Georgia? Long Beach, Cali in the building. Illinois is in the house. Pula GA in the house. Miami Gardens, what up? Philly in the building. Grappling, Louisiana in the building. D-Town in the building. Ah, uh, who that? North Carolina in the building. There go Charlotte. What up, Charlotte? North Carolina in the building. Cleveland, Ohio. Oakland in the house. H Tan in the building. What up, Houston? Uh, wait, man. And I said Grand Rapids, Michigan in the building. Chicago, stand up. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Chattanooga, Tennessee in the building. South Carolina in the building. Memphis, Teen in the building. Raleigh, North Carolina. Naptown in the building. Columbia, South Carolina, Jacksonville, Mississippi, Uptown Nola in the building. What what up, New Orleans? What up, New Orleans? Hey, Galveston, Texas, Orlando, Florida, Rockford, Illinois, Vegas in the building, Alabama representing, Bridgeport, Bridgeport, Connecticut. That was South Carolina. I ain't get to see who that was. There go Blue Dreamer Duval in the building. Hey, what up, Florida? James Stone, Milwaukee in the building. Uh, Petersburg, VA in the building. Stick around. We about to get to that. Actually, we about to get to Petersburg. You might want to stay around. Um... Buffalo, New York in the building. Alexandria, Louisiana in the building. Uh, who that? Uh, Woodbridge, VA. Jeez, Woodbridge. I ain't hear that in a minute. Uh, uh, hold up. Wait a minute. Uh, St. Louis in the building. What up? Buffalo, New York in the building. What up, NY? Um, 
I say, uh, I see Suffolk VA in the build. A lot of VA. I might want to stick around. A lot of VA in the house. Cashville, Tennessee in the building. That's why they called it that. It used to be Tennessee. I ain't do none of that. I'm just saying that's how they used to say the raps. I'm sure it was higher than that, like 17. Not my anyway. Um, Birmingham, Alabama in the building. Ohio in the building. Detroit, Michigan in the building. I'm talking about that was years ago. That was, you know, before my time, man. Only <laughs> a lot of VA in the building. Halifax VA in the building. Danville in the VA in the building. Man, listen, y'all. VA, listen. I want y'all to understand something. Arizona, what's up? Delaware, what's going on? Yeah, it's in the key. You already know what's going on, JT. Eons ago, though. Eons ago. Baltimore City. But VA, I ain't, I ain't gonna get it started, VA. I'm a, when we start, you're gonna see what's going on. Stick around, VA. It's gonna be educational for everybody, though. Everybody, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. What y'all think about that thumbnail? We gonna come back to that, too. Um, Here in a second. We're going to come back to that. You said from South Carolina coast, OCO, OCO. Montgomery, Alabama in the building. Mm, what up, Alabama? Mooresville, North Carolina in the building. Minnesota in the building. Southeast San Diego in the building. West Valley, New York. Sheesh. What up, New York? Yeah, NBA young boy on the left. That's right. Duval County in the building. Yeah, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, so the I. Right. So I'm. Uh, we gonna talk about that and a couple other things too. Dane Calloway does not have a personal email, but you may contact his team. Yeah, that's true. You can contact my team at that email address. Three o five in my yeah yo. Absolutely, absolutely. We about to talk here in a second. We about to make that happen. I got a, uh, a few videos I got to show you. Um, this this one gonna be educational. Um, it's a lot of you know information floating around, misinformation. We gotta we gotta put a stop to all of that. Teach the truth. That's what this is all about. This that's what this is. When I say OCO, I'm talking to the free thinkers out there. Okay, I'm talking to the truth seekers out there. I'm not doing this for you know, people that's looking for some type of clout just to, you know, ride the bandwagon. I'm not looking for that. I'm, I'm looking for people that's actually trying to change their lives based off of the truth that is being provided. I don't got time for nothing else. Who that Oklahoma City in the building? What up, Oklahoma? Delaware in the building. Uh, ooh, where, where's, uh, Brevard, Brevard County, three, two, one. I don't know where that's at. Where that's at? South Los Angeles, California in the building. Where that LA? Minnesota in the building. Yeah, it's like Florida in the building. I see you. I'm making sure everything on. I. Right. So I got my stuff pulled up. I hope y'all ready. Y'all ready? I hope y'all ready. Set it on fire. 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 Give y'all a round of applause early. Dallas in the building. Birmingham, Alabama in the building. Roanoke, VA in the building. Manico, Minnesota. Toledo, Ohio. Be more in the building. Georgia. Tampa coming through. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Oh, 312 is Florida. Okay, okay. So y'all got when I go down Florida, y'all hope y'all pull up, show up, show off now. We about to pull up. Memphis 10 in the building. What up, Cap? Let me switch these screens. Oh, 
CEO, Freethinkers. You're now tuned into the realest historian on the planet. Planet. This brother, he is raising some serious questions. He's here to make you think. What I'm trying to do is get our people to understand that we have been lied to all the way around about our history. history. Can you name any other group of people, no matter their skin complexion, that are being labeled primarily as the name of two continents? Not two countries, two continents. It's up. It's up. That is called a misnomer, which is the act of applying a wrong name to some person or thing. The best teacher you wish you had in school. Have your pens and paper handy and get ready to take notes. Get ready to take notes. I want y'all to check out notes. somebody named Dane notes. Calloway. Dane Calloway? Look, at, look into Dane Calloway. He has a lot of information about how this whole shit was told in reverse. Okay, where they say, oh, we came from Africa over here. No, a lot of us was already here. And information that was put together by a man by the name of Dane Calloway, who is also questioning the slave trade. And he's done some remarkable videos on the history of the slave trade in the United States. And he's gone back down the food chain and gone back down the line. And he's realized that a lot of the so-called African-Americans in the United States are not African at all. They're actually Native Americans because the slave Life trade did not happen the way we were told that it happened. It's Dane Calloway. Go and watch this man's channel, man. This dude is phenomenal. I'm not saying African American because they're not African American. They're the Aboriginals because they were the, they were the true Native Americans. Set it on fire, fire. They're the copper color race. Look up Dane Calloway and watch his fucking shows. That man, I mean, Dane Calloway on YouTube. Oh my God. I mean, he is fucking beyond brilliant. The research he does. Ooh, he goes way deep into this shit. Relax and take notes. It's Dane Calloway on I'm Just Here to Make You Think Radio. 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 Here we go. So let's get started real quick, real quick, man. Let me drop a bomb. God is wild red. I appreciate that. Thank you, sister, for the dono. Uh, shout out to those of you that became members just recently here too. Oh, and the last um, <clears throat> let me double up real quick. Hold up. Let me. I, I don't know why this happened, but as I was, I guess because I was going offline yesterday. And Lafayette Holly dropped a big dono yesterday. Brother Lafayette, I appreciate that. Uh, I hope you hear this right now. I didn't get a chance to see that. But um, as I was closing out yesterday, but I appreciate that. Thank you, brother. Thank you, God is Wild Red also. Um, Dante, thank you for becoming a member. And Bobby Z, thank you for becoming a member. And Little Raven. Thank you for becoming a member as well. George Martinez, thank you for becoming a member as well. Oh, and uh, it says James Stone gifted a member. Yeah, James Stone, thank you for the gifted. All right, here we go. Let's start with this real quick before we switch to something else, right? When they say now and then, right? I mean, this should be real simple. You know what I'm saying? This, this guy... Um, I, I can't, you know, I, I can't lie about this. I don't know his music like that. Like, I don't know, um, like one of his songs and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I'm sure the children do, you know, but I know he doing his thing. You know, that's not no knock to the brother, nothing like that. I just, I'm unfamiliar with it. Um, I didn't get a chance to listen to it to see what's going on, but I know he doing his thing and I know he from New Orleans, right? But it's just, you know, I just wanted to show you all how, Things ain't changed. We still look the same. Don't she look like her his sister? Which I think right there. Dimples the lion has been a member for eight months in a row. It's up. She said it's up. It's up. Now, as far as the look is concerned, we talking about eyes, we talking about eyebrows, we talking about cheeks, we talking about nose, we talking about lips. 
Even in the darkness, the, the darkness around the top part of the eye, don't they don't that look like his sister? That looked like him with a wig on. <laughs> Even though that's her hair. That ain't no wig. Straight from here. The knee G straight from here. Yeah, he from New Oh, he from Baton Rouge? Oh, okay, okay. I, I mean, I know I heard an accent from that area. When I heard him. I, that, his accent heavy. His accent so heavy, sometimes I couldn't understand him. You know what I'm saying? If I was the interview, I'd be like, say that one more time. <laughs> say what you say now. <laughs> but um somebody said he worshiping the devil and stuff like that. I seen a couple of people was saying, saying some stuff about the brother, you know, I don't know him. Never met him. You know what I'm saying? I don't listen to his music or nothing like that. I'm just saying as far as the look is concerned. I just wanted to show y'all. We still here. And the thing is, you know, a lot of a lot of our younger generation is uh being led astray to many different things. And uh, you know, brothers like him will probably believe that story that, you know, we came from Africa story. Okay. But um, it's a couple of things we're gonna be going over tonight. A lot of misconception going on. I'm going to show y'all something real quick. Let's jump straight into it, man. I know me. I'm going to be talking anyway. Cut. Thank you for becoming a member. Oh, look. Uh, yeah, that's it. So I want to... You know what? I'm going to have to purchase... I have three screens. I think I'm going to have to do four. I think I'm going to start doing four screens. All right. So let's let's do this real quick. I want you to I want you to see this. Right? Some of you all may have seen this in a couple of my videos um elsewhere on the internet. And I want you to zone in real quick. Think real hard real quick. Let this sink in real quick. This is what we getting into right here, ladies and gentlemen. We about to, yes, yes, this is it. I know a lot of people ask me to talk about that. This was technically supposed to be one of my Easter egg Sundays, but I figured let me go live about certain things and I could add in extra things as an Easter egg Sunday that I missed during this live stream. So, notice how this sign says Pocahontas, the oldest black community in the United States. So we know that this is new, but not necessarily the community. We know the sign is new. I mean, we know because that black term is spanking brand new when it comes to us. We're going to get into that. Can anywhere, anybody in the chat real quick guess where this is located without using search engines? Don't be cheating. Right out the top of your head. You don't necessarily got to give me the county. You don't, you don't, you know what I mean? You don't got to give me the region. Just give me the state. What state is this? Look, I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? Nah, not Arkansas. God. Okay, Daniel. Thanks. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this VA, Petersburg, VA, to be exact. Petersburg, VA. No, nah, not North Carolina. Not Mississippi. Uh uh. This this VA. Pocahontas. Pocahontas. It, you know, okay. All right, so Pocahontas is the daughter to who, y'all? Let's, let's think about this. This is how you going to know where this is located. No, nah, not Charleston, South Carolina. This is Petersburg, VA. Nah, not Texas. This is Petersburg, VA, y'all. So, I right, so Pocahontas is the daughter to who? What's Big Chief name? Not, not his official name. Give me, give me his name. <laughs> right, Niji Warrior. Right, okay. I just wanted to see if I see it a couple times in the chat. All right. That's Big Chief. You understand what I'm saying? 
uh, of the Pahata nation. Well, I mean, you know, the Pahata family. Now, let me not even say nation. The Powhatans, right? Now, I, I want to say a few things about this because there's a lot of misconceptions about this tribe, one, or about this family, along with his brother, and his cousin, I'm going to be getting into that later. And I'll, I'll give you, you know, real names and everything. Because I'm going to be real with you. I can't say his real name right off the bat because his name is so long. But um, when I look at it, I want to I want to make sure I'm saying it, I mean, you know, correctly, because he played a major role. And I respect him as a chief for what he did and what he stood on. Like, that's one of the chiefs that I respect. Like, that's the one. Like, I respect him more so than my fifth time great grandfather. Like, like this guy is the truth. You know what I'm saying? But he was he was also led astray for other things. Yeah, see, now that is his real name, Eagle Feather. And y'all try to pronounce that. And I don't want to mispronounce it. <laughs> I want to be correct. Um, I don't, I don't want to take a guess. Yeah, Blue Dreamer, that's his real name. But I want y'all to, I want y'all to, I want y'all to hear me out on this, right? A lot of mispronunciations is out there too, and I don't want to do that neither. I want to put respect on his name. So when I come back, I'm going to give you the correct pronunciation. Because a couple of people, I mean, I heard a couple of diff different ways of saying it. And his brother, because his brother has a long name as well. But let me go to the source that I know that's official. And I'll, I'll be able to verify <laughs> and say, all right, yep, that's his name. Um, I'm still very close with that family. So, you know, we, we I could get that. I could get my hands on that. Um, One thing I'm going to go over is why they called this area Petersburg VA. The oldest black community in the United States. Pocahontas. Now, when you go to, I'm going to pull something else up. Uh, when you go to, you know, a lot of people know that I did a lot of research in Virginia with the Department of Historic Resources. I want y'all to understand how a lot of this stuff just came about as far as the stories um, uh, that was tied to uh, Mary Ellen Bushy and um, Ann Zoller. Y'all should know about Ann Zoller. Okay, Ann Zoller was allegedly working closely with Ann Bushy to do this story back in 1994. If you don't know that, now you know. And that Pocahontas Island Historic District was done in May on May 15th 2014 so years later even though they started that story back up in 1994 um i'm going to show you the historic marker real quick give me a second but yeah i mean that's that's exactly where this historic markers you know tagging their information from <clears throat> Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, let me zoom this in so y'all can see it. So I believe y'all can see it. Yeah. All right. The town of Pocahontas established it. I want y'all. This is this is the only part that I really want y'all to hear. The town of Pocahontas established in 1752 became a part of Petersburg years later in 1784. I want y'all to, that's very significant. Now they're gonna talk about how the people were African-American. I just want y'all to understand that this was done by the Department of Historic Resources in 2014. But they got this, uh, and I believe they even state that here where they got this information from Hold on, let me double check on my side. But they got it from a white lady and a so-called black woman, a Niji woman. 
Um, I keep in mind that story was crafted in 1994 as far as the Pocahontas Island story. So a lot of stuff was put in there way late as far as uh, bits and pieces that were added to the main story that they created together, which initially came out in May 2015. I mean, uh, May 15th, 2014, that the Department of Historical Re Department, Virginia Department of Historic Resources, that's what this came from, borrow from. Now, on my side, it's saying it's at the bottom. OK, yeah. So it is at the bottom. Yeah. See right here. May 15, 2014, and yes, uh, Mary Bushy and Ann Zoller, okay, in Petersburg, 1994. Now, what the, what the deal is, is how they tried to claim that a lot of this stuff was wiped out due to a tornado. We're going to be getting into that. We're also going to be getting into how they managed to stay that this has something to do with the Underground Railroad. A lot of the runaway slaves were coming over here and they established this territory prior to it becoming Petersburg. You're going to I'm going to play some things and you're going to notice that a lot of things have been er inserted. That's going to immediately raise a, a red flag to you as soon as you hear it. So I, the first thing I'm going to do is play you this uh, before we go deeper. I want to go deep. Away. I want to I want to play Yeah, let me let me play this one real quick. Man, I hope this comes out loud. Hold on. Let me I hope that is loud enough. Hopefully. Let me see. Community known as Pocahontas Island. The peninsula is considered one of the oldest African American communities in the United States, and one man is making an effort to preserve its legacy. Eight News reporter Aaron Thomas shares its hidden history. All right, now, listen, hold on. Before we go any further, I'm just in case you didn't hear that, ABC News 8 talking about Pocahontas Island and how one man, listen to this, one man is preserving its history. Okay, talking about Central Virginia's hidden history. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. If you couldn't hear it, this is the reason why I'm going over it. Um, or what they said, because yeah, this is, this is all the way up, but, um, I don't know. Hold on. That's, that's as far as I could turn it up. Uh, yeah, that's as far as I could turn it up on this side too. Damn. Um, uh, maybe I should save this part for the Easter egg Sunday where I could boost up this volume because I believe this whole thing is low. Yeah, I'm clear, but that video was not. The video is low. I can hear it in my headphones. And this came out in 2018. All right, hold on, let me see. Hidden history. Just steps away from downtown Petersburg lies Pocahontas Island, 70 acres of what once was a hub for tobacco, trade, and railroads, but most notably considered a place for black freedom. You passed Pocahontas. You passed the gateway of the South. Richard Stewart lives and works in the town he considers a crown jewel. He grew up here and never had intentions on coming back, but he says his being here now is a calling. I spent so much time working on this property and this museum is a token of appreciation to my ancestors that left me so much. Stewart established the Pocahontas Island Black History Museum, capturing the spirit of what this small community used to be. Now, all right, now they're moving a little bit quickly, but notice how this was established in 2003. Richard Stewart, that gentleman that you saw, established the Pocahontas Black History Museum. 2003, right? They said that he grew up in Petersburg. That was a 70 acre um, area that used to be just for tobacco planting that our ancestors utilized in the past. They converted a piece of one of those houses into a museum. Now, keep in mind, they said that he left uh, Petersburg, Virginia, but came back. And then all of a sudden, he wanted to preserve the history here. I just want you to notice what happened because they ran over this really quickly. But let, let's go back. I'm going to come back a little bit. Listen to what they're saying. One more time. Let's do it one more time. Just steps away from downtown Petersburg lies Pocahontas Island, 70 acres of what once was a hub for tobacco, trade, and railroads, but most notably... So tobacco, trade, and railroads, that's what it was, okay? 
Now they he came back and say, but most notably, it's considered a place for black freedom. It's considered a place for black freedom. Now I also marked this to let you guys know that this was done on February seventh, two thousand eighteen. This video right here. All right, here we go. You pass Pocahontas, and you pass the gateway of the South. Richard Stewart lives and works in the town he considers a crown jewel. He grew up here and never had intentions on coming back. He grew up here and never had intentions on coming back. But he says his being here now. Look at that. Right beside it is a boarded up. Yeah. If y'all, if somebody got their feel, I'm going to warn y'all right now. If somebody had their feelings invested into this, I'm going to break your heart. I'm going to tell you that up front. Get ready. It's a lot of stuff that we could, it's about to be uh, <laughs> fair warning. I'm telling you, all it, it be, it be, it's just, it's not all of the older people, but it's, it's the, <laughs> it's a good amount of the older people that were used as plants here and got paid to do a job. Notice how they said, but he lives and works there. Keep in mind, this is his museum. This is a house right next to a boarded up house. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. Definitely sounds fishy. Wait till we go further. I'm about to go further because I have more information. And so does my wife, by the way. But during this live stream, I'm just going to go step at a time, step at a time. I want you to see it for yourself. But here we go. Look, first of all, look at the house. Look, look at it. This is what he's in. He's in a regular house. And that was converted into a museum with all this stuff hoarding and sat being hoarded inside of his house. This is a kitchen. They go to microwave, they go to stove, they go to coffee uh maker. Look, y'all. Had intentions on coming back, but he says his being here now is a calling. I spent so much. So his being here now is a calling. I'm going to repeat what they're saying. Now he came in and said he spent so much time uh, working on this property. Working on the property. It's a token appreciation to my ancestors. Token appreciation to his ancestors. So much. Stewart established the Pocahontas. His ancestors left him so much. Left me so much. Stewart established the Pocahontas Island Black History Museum, capturing the spirit of what this small community used to be. American, look, look at the sign. Look, these are handwritten. Uh oh. Uh oh. What what are those boards called? Um, that we used to have to utilize uh for science fair projects. Um, construct. No. Uh. Was it construction paper? Remember in science, not 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 the big tall boards for the science fair, but the one that is it construction boards, y'all, that we had to use to put stuff on. It was poster boards, poster boards. No, not not the car. Yeah, the car boards was the, the the tall ones I'm talking about, where we did the full fledged presentation of whatever science project we created. Yeah, or construction paper, right? So the poster boards construction paper, that is all throughout this museum, y'all. No cap. This is not a game. This is this is not even funny. But it's gonna be funny to some of y'all. I know that for a fact. All right, now right here it says America's first slaves, 1400s to 1690. Saying that these were America's first slaves, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it going. What this small community used to be. They will see. Negro served the Confederate Army. That's not all. That actually, that's that's not all. I'm not gonna say that's not true, but that's not all. Negro served on both sides. On both sides. Okay. Of slaves that went from Thomas Jefferson slaves and came here from freedom for freedom. 
Oh, oh, wait, man. He he telling a story. He used to be. They will see pictures of slaves that once were Thomas Jefferson slaves that came here from freedom for freedom. They will see pictures of slaves that was once Thomas Jefferson slaves that came here for freedom. They will see pictures of slaves that was once Thomas Jefferson slaves that came here for freedom. Did they run from Thomas Jefferson? Or were they manumented and started coming to different territories to make their lives a life outside of working for Thomas Jefferson? That's left in limbo for you to fill in the blank. They would find evidence of the Revolutionary War, black folks with photo names. The town, founded in 1752, also holds connections to slave rebellions in the 1800s, the Civil War, and served as a stop on the Underground Railroad. Stewart helps upkeep what's left of the once bustling town. He says remnants of its rich history can teach us a lot about today's issues. What that, what, what this got to do, what this right here got to do with Virginia? That right there. Okay. Mahoney can represent a place of atonement because black and whites live together here. That can be a day of atonement, of, of freedom, of peace between race. Reporting in Petersburg, Aaron Thomas, 8 News. All right, now. Mahoney Island is now recognized in the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. Of course, in now Smithsonian got a hold of that. That's the reason why this was put on ABC. I hope y'all heard that. The Smithsonian got control over that now. So now we know who cut the check. So I'm going to go. This is enough. Look, it, it get deeper. I'm going to just tell you that right now. And we know the Smithsonian holding a lot of our records, a lot of our, uh, a lot of things that we wrote too, a lot of our writings, a lot of our engravings. We know that for a fact, Smithsonian admitted it. I'm talking about things that we did. I remember at one point, I thought that we didn't write shit down until I investigated what the Smithsonian did. They was trying to hurry up and grab all this stuff so we wouldn't know shit. Whole time Smithsonian like, yeah, they wrote that. We just wanted it. And I remember somebody in the comments on my last live stream said that I said something about the Moors. No, I said the Mormons. The Mormons. Latter-day Saints are the ones that's also holding the records because Guess what? A lot of the people they put that they put in the forefront. Shout out to my wife, by the way. But she she investigated that and cracked it wide open. A lot of people that they putting out to the forefront back then that was supposed to be in charge of our communities were pastors. Pastors and preachers. And when somebody went to go have a baby, who was writing down all the birth information? The birthright. You always had to, well, come on, let's make sure Pastor such and such is here to give us the blessing. The blessing. What did that consist of? You writing down information. All of that information had to get, was it kept by the church or was it kept by a particular church that requested all of that information that you gathered from all of the communities that are so-called black? Y'all was the bookkeepers and the gatekeepers. Uh-oh. And this happened back then as well. Back then. They work right, yeah, church and state. They work hand in hand. Now, what I'm about to play next let me make sure that this audio is louder. Now owns the yes, majority. yes, thank God. <laughs> All right, this audio is louder. <laughs> All right, so I wanna, I wanna play this. A second. Let me make sure I'm gathering up. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Completely separate from the world around it. This secluded place is most famous for being one of the oldest free black communities in the entire United States. Hidden here is Pocahontas Island, 
and its caretaker, whose devotion to preservation heralds the ideas that these men strived for. And its caretaker, not caretakers, plural, caretaker, singular. That's very important. This is their story. This is their story. I believe life is about keep it simple. The same streets that my ancestors worked on, walked on, five, six, seven, eight generations, I still walk down it. Some of these houses we have cemeteries in the backyard. The spirits are there. The river itself, to walk down a nature trail, to see a groundhog, to see a snake, to see you can turn towards Colonial Heights here and like he was back in the 17th century. You can, like you can hear a slave running through the underground railroad, coming through the trees, like something spoke to you that I'm here. This is Mr. Richard Stewart, a lifelong resident of the island. He has dedicated most of his life to not just the physical, but also the cultural preservation of this community. Because of his lifelong passion and dedication to the island, he was given a special honorary title. That was a name that uh, look at what he got on. We already know there's something up. He got on a shirt that say Black Holocaust. Over a hundred million stolen. And that's a lie. <laughs> Off the break. Remember, that's that same picture that I debunked live streams ago. That was an engraving where I was exposing how you couldn't fit people like that and no sailboat. No way. That wasn't going to happen. There's no room for nothing in there. That's impossible. And then on top of that, you uh, are alluding to the fact that you're putting more so-called enslaved people on the boat than the people that are on top of it trying to sail it through the streams of the river or the ocean, rather. They can easily shut you down because they will outnumber you. This is the reason why they left it in limbo for you to come up with the story, to believe in your own mindset of how many people was on board. Not, not enslaved. Who came and got the enslaved so-called enslaved Africans. How many? That's left in limbo for a reason. But this is the type of shirt that he got on. Number one, they say black. Here we go. For his honorary position that started some years ago. I think, man, John Bray called him the unofficial mayor. Because I had done so much, Senator, Senator Roslyn Dance was Mayor Petersburg, and she did gave me an honorary forever position as an honorary mayor of Pocahontas by proclamation. The elders came to me and said, look here, we'll make sure you don't leave here. They gave me a house to stay in. Gave you a house? Yeah, with uh -oh. a little money I paid won't nothing. Uh -oh. They said, we'll never want you to leave here. Because one day, you leave Pocahontas. Uh oh. Some of them even on their deathbed. Put that in my hand. You got to protect Pocahontas and make Pocahontas a better day. Even on their deathbed, Mr. John. Uh oh. He told you his mission. He told you he got paid and they gave him a house. Look, y'all. Look. It's going to get deeper. This is just the start. It's going to get deeper. So again, if, if this is going to be a hard pill for you to swallow, I'm trying to tell you, take your time. Because it's going to get deeper. 
in more ways than one, he just admitted that he was a hired agent. Total fraud. And no, they ain't here, elder. Don't that. No, 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 no. Stop that. When you call somebody an elder, you're handing them a title that they do, they, they have to earn. Just like I have to earn your respect. Just because you lived longer than me, me does not mean automatic entitlement to the elder. That does not mean that. Whoever came up with that is wrong, royally, and correct. Because you would turn around and call this brother here elder outright because of his age. He did not have any accomplishments. They handed this stuff to him. Now, he said that he'd had no money. We're going to go back over this again. No money. They gave him the money, told him not to leave. He was getting ready to go. Gave him an honorary title, rank, made him alpha. We, we went over this again, me and my wife. Rank, title, just like black and white, status, gave him a status, told him not to leave, here's your job. We need you to sell your people out. Feed them a story of bullshit, and you're going to get paid for it. Don't worry about nothing else. We got you. He admitted that, right? That's not Dane Calloway making that up. They gave him a proclamation, office of mayor, Gave him an honorary status. Richard A. Stewart Day. It says August. That says August. Oh, look, it happened the same year. Look how fast it went. August 7, 2020. I mean, uh, uh, 2003. The same year that he established this house. 2003. August 7th. And it says, whereas, right here, it says, whereas the title of, quote, the unofficial mayor of Pocahontas Island. That's what it say right there. This is not a game. And then he says, the elders came to me and said, look here, we'll make sure you don't leave here. They gave me a house to stay in. Gave you a house? Yeah, and no little money I paid won't nothing. They said, we'll never want you to leave here. Because one day, you leave Pocahontas. Some of them even on their deathbed. Put that in my hand. You got to protect Pocahontas and make Pocahontas a better day, even on their deathbed, Mr. John. Though humans have lived on the island for thousands of years, our story begins with the arrival of the Western Europeans. If you go back to, into primitive days, there's evidence of life been discovered here 6500 BC has been discovered here on this island, uh, certain artifacts. But if you want to uh, move forward, when we really uh, became an, a location in reality, around 1634, when this Haraco County came all the way down to the Appomattox River, and called tons of Nake. Doing it back in the day called the regulation, uh, back in the, uh, if you was free, you had to plant a mulberry tree. That's why we got a mulberry tree on each, most of the lots, Ryan, because that represents- That's a mulberry tree, isn't Yeah, it? that represents freedom. That's a mulberry tree. That's a mulberry tree. Each of these trees are the last remnants of the old property lines. Stop. Stop. Planting a tree represented freedom. This is a bullshit. Keep in mind what I said yesterday. I mean, and yeah, yesterday's live stream is that they have agents sitting right there to constantly make you in, in your mindset, keep it in your mindset, keep you focused on playing the victim, the victim. And they're going to tell you that our ancestors planted these trees. 
No evidence, just the story. You know, he read, he been read, they, they gave him a script. He had to learn that. But see, the more, the more times that you keep repeating something, the more you believe it. The more that you believe that it's actually true. Because he ain't have no idea about none of this. Because if he did, if he really wanted to do something, he would have did it on his own. Why he waiting until some white folks said, nah, we're going to give you all of this and you do it. Why they pick him? In 2003, they picked him randomly. We see other houses out there. They could have picked anybody else, but they picked him. Last name Stewart. It's a reason why. Just like back in the past, those of you that remember, y'all could probably recall back in the 60s, a lot of the people, or was it, yeah, was it the 60s or the 70s? I believe it was either the 60s or the 70s. A lot of our people were being hired in positions of the government purposely. And then the next generation that came, which will be my generation, we will be wondering why it's so hard for us to get in the government. Why a government? Thinking that that was the good position to play in. Why was it so hard for us to get in the government and so easy for y'all? Because they wanted everybody else to play a position. And, and some of them took that to the head. They, they, you know, took that to the head thinking they were just doing something because they was working for the government. The whole time the government had plans. And it's either the government or else. So just because you work for the government, that, that don't mean, you know what I'm saying, that it's the end all be all. And of course, you're not going to look at the agenda because you're getting paid and that's the most you ever got paid in your life. I'm talking about they would take back then they were taking people coming straight out of high school. That's happening, y'all. And that happened. Straight out of high school and straight into the government. And I believe they was getting paid GS7s and above. That's no cap. You changing somebody's life, giving them $40,000, $45,000 a year at that time, coming straight out of high school, they ain't even got to worry about college. And don't forget that that's also the same time period that they made particular people go to college for free. We exposed that as well. Because they had an agenda with that. That was the political agenda right there. They knocking two. Listen. They knocking two birds out with one stone. But again, no paperwork, just somebody running their mouth telling you that our ancestors planted these trees a representation of freedom. Some people will eat that up and they know that because it's going to make, see, they just like a salesperson, a salesperson is going to cater to a person's pain in order to sell whatever it is that they want to you. For example, if you lost somebody personal to you and you come in to go get a coffin, the salesman at a coffin going to tell you to get this particular coffin, even though it's expensive. And then they're going to, you know, pull from your pain like, yeah, I just lost my such and such, too. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we was blah, 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 blah. They're going to give you a whole sob story. Turn right around and say, we, I, we, we, they're going to, you know, bring it back, you know, spin it back around to trying to sell that coffin to you. Yeah, so we went with this coffin because it's comfortable on this side and blah, 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 blah. But you, by that time, you didn't sold the person. You catered to their pain. So they're going to believe anything that you want. It's sold. And they want, excuse me, they're going to believe anything that you say. They are sold. So that's why when you hear somebody say a person sold out, they're a sellout, that's what they're referring to. So if you don't know it, now you do. As a boy, Mr. Stewart would play for hours in this field. Today, he now owns the majority of what you see before you. He now owns the majority of what you come on now with no money. They gave him that many acres of land. 
You know that's you know that's a problem. John Bolin, the descendant of Pocahontas, went to the House of Burgess and said, "Uh, uh-uh. I want this island to be this island to be named in the honor of my great great grandmother because this supposed to been given to her as a wedding gift. I want to be named Pocahontas." And with them going to the House of Burgess at that time and having a name, it was named Pocahontas in Chesterfield County. John Bowling also established <laughs> the first major tobacco warehouses in the area. With this new crop came a need for a new kind of labor. There was unlimited freedom gained to a lot of blacks after the Revolutionary War. That's where a lot of my folks got land. So a lot of people throughout the state of Virginia who was emancipated from the Revolutionary War that fought for their slave master left and came here because they didn't feel threatened. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What you mean that they fought for their slave master? Mixing in lies with truth. They fought for their slave master? Come on, man. There was unlimited freedom gave to a lot of blacks after the Revolutionary War. That's where a lot of my folks got land. So a lot of People throughout the state of Virginia who's emancipated from the Revolutionary War to fought for their slave master. That's Nothing wrong. came here because they didn't feel threatened. That's wrong. The people that fought is because of the fact that we were the majority and still are as far as the population is concerned. It was the majority us fighting in these wars. That's documented. No matter which war you look at. It wasn't because the slave master asked them to. Why would they do that? The slave master wants you to work. They don't want you to go die. The slave master needs you there. The employer needs you there to do the job. They don't want you to go die. Because if they actually bought and paid for you, then what are they getting in return on the investment of sending you off the wall? Think about that. That's just like me saying a player on a foot on my football team is doing real good this year, but I'm gonna let him play around with another football team that's in opposition. And allow them to offer him a contract and take him away. Notice how I use football. This ain't no joke. Our people were in all of these wars. It wasn't that many foreigners over here. But again, feeding people sob stories and, oh, they need help. Some of our people were being too kind back then. I'm going to tell you that right now. By being here and they could work and, and, and the labor force in Petersburg was needed and they came to Pocahontas and they were free. Pocahontas Island uh, is there you go. in that it is one of that's the that's the uh, where it was needed and they came to Pocahontas and they was free. That's it. Department of Historic Resources 2015. And that's all for Pocahontas and Saponi. That's it. That's the historical marker. 2015, they use the terms like African American, of course. They use the terms like black. Look, use the terms like Native American. 2015. Brand spanking new. This is not old. And they got this in 1994 from a white woman that wrote the majority of this story. And going to tag along another uh, a Niji lady at, you know, for approval. Everybody should adopt this story because of that. Well, how did a white lady know that story? Pocahontas Island uh, is significant in that it is one of Virginia and, by extension, America's oldest and earliest free black settlements. Uh, a lot of the blacks that lived there, I mean, the, the white residents of Petersburg that dominated its economy prior to the Civil War thought they were, you know, corralling or exiling the blacks there, but the blacks took it as home. I mean, they, they have considered it as their home from the beginning. And I think mm. that. Interesting. 
Let me say that. Let me let him say that one more time. Spiritual connection. I mean, the, the white residents of Petersburg that dominated its economy prior to the Civil War thought they were you know, corralling or exiling the blacks there, but the blacks took it as home. I mean, they, they have considered it as their home from the beginning. And I think that spiritual connection. And that's prior to Petersburg becoming Petersburg. Over 200 years to a place where they have basically been able to call their own for that long um, is a wonderful thing. I mean, and it's thriving to this day. Uh, so it's part of the story that is not only historical, but it's current as well. We sat down with Mr. Lewis Mayland, Director of Preservation Services for Preservation of Virginia, an organization he's been with for more than 30 years. We are the oldest uh, statewide historic preservation organization in the country, founded in 1889, and have been active in physical preservation and also working with communities toward preserving their neighborhoods. Uh, that's the same time period that they created the story, 1889. That's the same time period that they created the stories of the Underground Railroad. Same time period. Matter of fact, uh, I don't have that in front of me because I forgot that he mentioned that, but I could show you uh, the government records. I have, though. I have, though. That's in my videos. Uh, how that happened around that same exact time. And those preservation companies or preservation, uh, not companies, institutions came about. Virginia was one of them. This was one of them. It streamlined in every state. And then they decided to pick certain things and say, okay, well, that's, that's historic. Let's, let's mark that down. I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be old houses going up for sale. It could be an old truck that's been sitting there for years. Nobody know who it's tagged to. They'll create a story with it and say, okay, that's historic. This is what happened with this story. This is what happened with this area. That's what they're there to do. And that's how they came up with the Underground Railroad story. This is how I knew Nat Turner was bullshit because it ran right into um, Nat Turner's story as well. And I was catching them at that time, back in 2017, I was catching them at that time where they were about to do the same thing they did with this area. They were about to do, and not uh, Cortland and... Uh, uh, shoot, what part of Virginia was that? That was in um, Southampton, in Southampton County. I caught them right on time. I believe I might have halted them from doing that, too. I believe so, because that never went through. What they, I'm talking about they had the funds and everything, and it never went through. I exposed their route. I exposed the route that they were trying to open up. Nothing but was, and they were trying to claim that it was going to be a route that he ran through. I got all that on video camera and I put that on camera a couple of times. <clears throat> I was there for a long time knocking that stuff out. Um, Jerusalem, Virginia, Cortland, Virginia, Hamp, Southampton, Virginia. I caught them right on time. And that, that Turner joke never came about. I showed you the houses that they were getting ready to use and how, you know, as far as those preservation projects, how, how much funds it was. I showed you the records. I showed you which house they said they didn't, that they, they picked at first, and they said they didn't want it. It was two shotgun houses, old federal houses, okay? Not, one of them didn't have an upstairs. The other one did. They said they wanted the bigger one because nobody could walk through it. I showed you that. That's also inside of the book called, called False Heroes, False Hopes. That video was also still on my channel. That they did the exact same thing. The, these the, the preservation projects, preservation projects was set to pick spots to simplify things, to pick spots to say, mm, that looked like a nice spot that we could come up with a story with and say that this and this happened, and that we could sell it for tourism. I told you the number two money maker in the United States of America is tourism. That is the number two money maker. They were potentially about to make between 30 to 50 million dollars that one year that they were going to come out uh, with the uh, the site, the, the uh, Nat Turner site. And I showed you what it was called. I forgot the name of it right offhand. Matter of fact, is my book near me? Uh, uh, yeah, hold on. I got it in. Hold up. All right, so that national, 
Hold on, I'm about to tell you what it was called. Give me a second. They did the same thing with uh, Harriet Tubman, by the way. By the time I caught on the Harriet Tubman, it was too late. They, they already had certain things in place. Just like I was about to tell you, and I, <laughs> let me keep that to myself, because I don't want them to know everything. Okay, matter of fact, okay, this is also what I came into, public law. Um, remember when, I, when he said 1889? I want y'all to look up public law 90, hold up, let me get my glasses, 96, 430, 96 Congress. Look up public law 96, 40, 30. That's the act to create those so-called African-American national historic sites throughout the United States. And the preservation projects like this one right here was set to do that. The, the little, these little subdivisions. Hold on, but let me go to what I was looking for. Okay, yeah, the, the Rebecca Vaughn house. Hold on, I'm almost there. All right, so it was called, okay, the trail was called the 1831 Southampton Insurrection Trail. That's what it was going to be called, but I, I halted them, basically. And they were trying to find a house, Re Re Rebecca Vaughn House. They're going to say that's the person that he killed, but they were trying to pick it. And I showed you the two houses. I went down there and I said, something is wrong. The house is not here. Well, come to find out, they moved it. And replaced it with another one. And I called him at the same. And I, that's why that never came out. Never came out. Still to this day. Matter of fact, it's inside of my book as well. Page 38. I showed you that I showed you on video format. In the video on page 38. Those two separate houses. Two separate houses. They were not the same. And they were trying to. They, they were trying to use those federal dwellings. That was built in 1795. To say, okay. We're going to say that this is the Rebecca Vaughn house. We're going to set this all up, make it look like a museum, just like how they're doing with this, too. Just like how they're doing with this, too. And people could go visit so they can earn cash money from it. This is the reason why that guy, Stewart, that Stewart guy, got paid up front. And they knew how much money he was going to make. Seven years. But above all else, he is a lifelong resident of Petersburg. It literally was a place we made a journey to. I mean, it was only five, six miles out of town, but, you know, come Saturday morning, that's where we went to shop. Come Sunday morning, that's where we went to go to church. Uh, I ended up later on going to high school, at a, you know, just up the road here. So, you know, this is where I came to for education. So it's a place you go to um, for any number of reasons. For Richard, it's probably something that he understood as a, you know, central to his life. Um, so, you know, Mecca is sort of a catch-all term for that, but it, it's, it, it's something that in, in, uh, indicates a certain uh, respect you know, for the, or reverence even for a place. Feel like you can feel those presences? Wow. Still? I can Yes. What does that feel like? Oh, man. You hit them. <laughs> uh, ancient voodoo was practiced here. Christianity was practiced. Here. Okay, 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 okay. Stop it. Stop it. He said ancient voodoo was practiced here. Christianity was practiced here. Listen, y'all. From this, where I'm at in life here now, I am still communicating with the past. When I walk the river trails, it's like a spirit speak to me through the trails. The medicine man and the medicine woman did not practice voodoo. What they practice, y'all? Anybody out there remember? At night, like I can see things. Look like I'm protected. You asked me a question, what's it like to live here? Regardless of what went on in Petersburg, or wherever I was at in the world, even when I went to Germany, Norway, Greece, military, no place was like Pocahontas till I got back. I felt I was protected from childhood. Root work. The spirit still protected me. That's how I feel about it. We were spiritual people. 
and still are. We still are spiritual people. But do we, yeah, we worked in, no, hoodoo was another form. It looks similar, but it's, it's, it's a little bit different. It's all about the roots. Notice how they purposely named something that was going against what we originally were, Roots. They named that movie Roots. That was purposely done. I'm trying to tell you. They were throwing that back in our faces and going to line that with Africa when they ain't got nothing to do with them. That was always here. Same thing with Wakanda. They tried to make, but in that movie, they was making it seem like Wakanda had all to do with the area in Africa, a false area, I mean, uh, a false area in Africa. When Wakanda is actually here, I'm talking about the whole Wakanda <laughs> here. <laughs> and they just, and our people say, fuck it, no, Wakanda forever. And, and thinking they talk about Africa. Yes, medicine, herbs, roots, that, yeah. We was invested in the plants and the, you know, and the trees. That's why I said, okay, where he get that story from, could be coming up with it. But definitely all of nature. We were ones with, exactly, we were ones with nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, the tobacco in certain cases was utilized to do, um, how could I say this more professionally, to uh, better someone's health. Not the tobacco that we're familiar with now that does harmful things to you. It was tobacco in the past that would do great things for your body. That's tobacco was so popular for that reason. <laughs> All over the place. Ask the Dutch. Ask the Germans that came here. Yeah. Ask them. They were the first ones to get here. The Germans. Ask them. Ask them. Our tobacco was number one. And that was North and South America here. Especially in medicine. This is the Black History Museum. Established in 2003, this building houses thousands of artifacts from across the centuries. Artifacts from across the... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hola. Assembled I'm sorry. Artifacts from across the centuries. The, okay, the artifacts from across the centuries. Let's take a look. Uh, one, two, three chairs, probably from the sixties. A bench, probably from the seventies. A chair, probably from the seventies. One, two, three tables, probably from the seventies. Uh, we got a picture in the frame, some cardboard, I mean, poster board, poster board, poster board, poster board, a banner, uh, and gray, no, that's a watercolor painting. What do you mean for centuries? What, what do you, a plant that didn't, if it's still alive, we know that ain't lasting for no centuries and no house that ain't getting no real sunlight. What are you talking about? Mr. Stewart both owns and operates the museum. Over the years... Hold up. That's a china closet. Hold up. Hold oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. All right, so we got... Okay, we got... Uh-oh. We got the Confederate flag. We got some... Uh, look like we, we got an Asian right here. They go consider him a Native American. Um, I can't see what this is. A couple of China pieces. Uh, the little, My grandmother used to collect these. I forgot what they're called. My grandmother used to collect these all the time. But I forgot what they were called. Little, little ornaments. But that, that's not for centuries. It wasn't for no centuries. Okay, here we go. Plains Indian. Plains Indian. Um, and a couple of poster boards. We got a dining room table. I think this one of them type table. Yeah, they go that cloth that grandma used to have. This is probably one of them tables that expand. China closet right here to the right. I can't see the pieces, but it looked like the China's out of it. I don't see no China pieces in there. You know how they, you know how grandma do. Boom box on the floor. That table probably from the 70s. This table probably from the 70s. What uh and all of these pictures are in framed. Recently, like these ain't no old frames. 
What we what we talking about here? Museum. Over the years, he's assembled these treasures with nearly all of them being purchased with his own money. A total. Stop it. What all of it being purchased with his own money? Total sum ranging in the tens of thousands. In the tens of thousands. Stop, y'all. Stop. Stop. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stewart, I understand that you're a photographer? Yes, sir. And you took these pictures, right? Mm-hmm. What? what are these pictures? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Mr. Stewart, I understand that you're a photographer. Yes, sir. And you took these pictures, right? Mm hmm. You took these pictures, Stewart? You took that picture over there? You took that picture right there? You took that picture right there? You took that picture right there? Stop lying. This is the reason why, yeah, you can't be considering these niggas elders. Hey, don't, don't be like, oh, no, it's his age. He know what the hell he talking about. He didn't take these pictures. Talking about something, he a photographer. He did not take these goddamn pictures. You not old enough to take these pictures, uh, Richard Stewart. That's embarrassing. White guy asked him, he already knew that you lied by the OK. He gave you the OK like how white police officers do when they know you lying. Watch. Oh, Mr. Stewart, I understand that you're a photographer. Yes, sir. And you took these pictures, right? Mm hmm. What are these pictures of? Like, which ones? Each picture reflects our history and our culture. No, stop. Well, okay. Well, first one is Isaac Jefferson. Isaac Jefferson is one of Thomas Jefferson's slaves that came here. He took the picture. In 1875, between 1853, Isaac Jefferson, did you take this picture? You said you took these pictures. Did you take this picture? In the 1820s after Mr. Jefferson's death, he stayed until he died. He was probably bowling. He had saw Pocahontas on the way to Williamsburg with the Heming family and saw this as being the promised land. While many of these objects have an aura of majesty about them, there are a select few that may give some pause as to their inclusion. Uh-oh. There's maybe some of them to give them pause to their inclusion. Like, first of all, that's an engraving. Charles Stewart, Pocahontas. Who are you going to say? That's his father? That's an engraving. See, that's another thing. Engravings and stuff like that that don't have names on them, you could put whatever name you want on it. That's the same thing they did with them Harriet Tubman pictures. Nobody laid claim to those pictures. And they handpicked that picture and said, okay, that's Harriet Tubman. Like right now, you don't have no picture of Nat Turner for a reason. It was too late. <laughs> It was too late. They lucky. They so lucky. I didn't catch them before they got to that uh to the Harriet Tubman stuff. I would have caught them. But that's why you don't got no official picture of no Nat Turner. And some of y'all won't be stupid and believe that he was a real, a real person named Nat Turner. When Turner is his alias, and that was coming from Thomas Ruffin Gray, his own stories creator. He said he made up that last name. That's an alias. Just because you got the last name uh, Turner don't mean that you related to that. Just because you got the last name Tupman don't mean that you related to Harriet. Keep in mind, Harriet Tupman wasn't her name neither. No, it was Araminta Ross, Dane. Prove it. Because in the, her so-called affidavits, it was nowhere near in them affidavits talk about her life. What she mentioned, she changed her name. From Harriet Davis to anything else. The original character's name was Harriet Davis. Was not changed.
She ain't have no kids with neither one of her. And that's coming from, uh, if, if she know how to read and write, see, that's another thing. According to the stories, they saying she ain't know how to read and write. Then who, who wrote her affidavits? Who? I'm talking about top to bottom here. Yeah? And we gave you all of them. Matter of fact, what I put that book? All of them. <clears throat> we gave you all of them. And we got the real ones in front of us. She asking for pensions in 1913. Handwriting. I'm looking at it right now. She got the death records of her. She, she trying to prove that she was uh, married to her first husband. She fighting for 23. No, she was fighting for $20. Something like that. Remember how they tried to put her on the $20 bill? She fighting for pensions. Ain't there one of y'all want to help her? And then on top of that, I dare you to tell me where that money going. When somebody make a, a movie or a book on how you're talking, where that money going? It's going back to the family. What family? What family? They showed you, I remember a couple years ago, they showed you two little girls and talk about some, these are Harriet Tubman's great, 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 great granddaughters. Nigga, how? By way of what? I dare you. And I'm, I'm talking about I dare you. <clears throat> we could go on the biggest platform and I will immediately debunk both of them. Quick. I got the paperwork here. Got it. She said she ain't had no children with neither one of her uh, husbands and her own affidavits. So who are these little ass girls you talk about something that's related to her? I dare you to tell me if that came from her brother or her sisters. I dare you. And then I want you to tell me their names. And then I want you to tell me who they marry. And then I want you to tell me that all that all all of that genealogy story. Matter of fact, just in case, I'm gonna show y'all something real quick. I'm about to come back to this. Let me let me show y'all how I do it. Just in case they wanted to lie and say that that Mary Bushy girl wasn't a white woman. I I, I see that she she was here. It is. Right here, y'all. The writer of that story that was done in 1994, she just died this year. She just died. That's her name, Mary Bushy, 72. Formerly of Salamanca, New York. Passed away Friday, September 1st, 2023 at her home. You think I'm playing? So if I if I trace my steps this way too to see who these people are, this how I told you that that was a white woman. That wasn't just me making that shit up. I got verification. So I dare you to pop, hop out there with Harriet Tubman in that Turner here. I dare you. I will put thousands of dollars on me that I'm going to win. Quick. I showed you what Thomas Weffern Gray looked like. I showed you what Sarah Bradford of Geneva looked like, the creator of Harriet Tubman. Both of them niggas white or, or Caucasian. Thomas Weffern Gray is from Virginia, but Sarah Bradford is from Geneva, England, nigga. How the hell she know Harriet Tubman? Name the time when she sat down and did an interview with her. And tell me where. Tell me when. I dare you. And then who took them pictures of Harriet Tubman? Who was the photographer? Richard Stewart? <laughs> huh? I understand you took your photographer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you took these pictures? Yes, yes. Huh? So just in case 
Yeah, you think I'm playing right here. Mary Ellen Bushy, this is her. Mary Ellen Bushy, she just died this year. Just died. She did a couple of other things too. But notice how it always, you know how when a person died in your family, they always say she survived by. When you look up Harriet Tubman, when she died, oh Lord. Ooh, let me keep all that to myself. Anyway, I'm going to keep it moving. Y'all not ready? So there's a lot of stuff that have to deal with the clan. Yeah. And stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And some people would say, why would you keep something like this in a, in a museum? Why would this sort of stuff be displayed? What, why do you feel like it's important to display? This? Do you realize that most of this stuff I got, my white friends gave it to me? That listen, listen, listen earlier, they said that he went out and bought and paid for this stuff. Then he turned around and said, what? It's like it's important to display. This. Do you realize that most of this stuff I got, my white friends gave it to me? That most of the stuff I got, my white friends gave to me. It's up. Fatality. I want y'all to understand something. You look at that, I'm talking about modern day. You looking at a plant right now, y'all. You know, no matter what, no matter what, the game give him the benefit of the doubt because of his age. Fuck no. He sold his people out. Well, why that back? Y'all want me to wind that back? Look, okay, hold on, look, listen. Would say, why would you keep something like this in a, in a museum? Why would this sort of stuff be displayed? What, why do you feel like it's important to display? This? Do you realize that most of this stuff I got, my white friends gave it to me? Stop, bro! Don't you realize that most of the stuff I got, my white friends gave it to me, y'all? And they will go unnamed. He may sprinkle here and there a couple people, but we don't know if he coming up with that shit just like how he coming up with the rest of the shit. And let's see your excuse now. Let's hear your excuse about why. Yeah, they wanted me to say, Richard, put this in your museum and let people know of the past. Mm. If you don't know your past, you're bound to repeat it. A lot of things they gave me for uh, correspondence, how you can join, but we blocked the hot, hot, what do you call it, the hotline number hot out. Line. Even here, a friend of mine from North Virginia sent me old paper and told other people's hung in Petersburg. Uh, John Forbes. June 11th, 1889, and in Poria, the cotton people. These folks send me these things. And most of them that I got this stuff from is white friends of mine. Do they ever, um, I'm trying to think of the right, right way to say, do they ever, how like sensitively do they approach? Do they approach you? Or do they just give it to you and say, you need to put this in here? Or do they say like, uh, well, I'm not sure if you want this, but... Yeah, that's it. A lot of them are very hesitant about bringing the memorabilia like this by here. But a lot of them trust in me because I go from different places to lecture. I lecture about black confederate. I lecture about so forth and so on. But they don't got confidence in me that I would display this in the museum, but I would not carry it out in public. You know what I mean? And yeah. huh? Just for the museum only. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's suspect. Wait. Just display it in the museum only, but don't carry it out in public. They trust you to do that. Why? How does that make sense? I mean, isn't that a public museum? 
That sound like bullshit to me. Yeah, they, they trusted me to not, you know, uh, bring this out in the public, but they trust that I'm going to keep this here in the museum. But the museum is public, so the public will be able to come in and see that. They could take it outside if they want to and say, look, I went in this museum and I saw a bunch of stuff for the cake. What the fuck are you talking about? That don't sound right. And all of these pictures are from real... Yeah, real, real things that happen throughout America. Real things that happen throughout America. But that's a Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This is a museum in Pittsburgh, Virginia. About Pittsburgh, Virginia. About Pocahontas Island. Another Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 1935, by the way. Okay. Turn right behind that and show Pocahontas Island as if that covert No, the fuck it don't. That's out. Community isn't just a collection of houses. It's also um, uh, an identity. I'm Cassandra Newby Alexander. I'm a professor of history at Norfolk State University uh -oh. and the director of the Joseph Jenkins Roberts Center for African Diaspora Studies. Oh, Lord. Wait a minute. Everything was straight until she said she was. Oh, listen to. <laughs> Listen to how her voice dropped to let y'all know who she the director of, bruh. Community. She's all happy and, oh my God, and listen to me. House. And it's like. It's also um, uh, an identity. I'm Cassandra Newby Alexander. I'm a professor of history at Norfolk State University. A professor of history at Norfolk State University. Watch the tone. University and the director of the Joseph Jenkins Roberts Center for African Diaspora Studies. Oh my God, bruh. We already know what's about to happen. Well, let's, let's just see. Let's give her a chance. Let's just see what's about to happen. How did you first get started in history? Like what drew you to it? Uh, I had a very circuitous route to get to history. I've always loved history in my family background. I've, I would listen to stories, especially from my father's mother, talking about her family and hearing about how my grandmother and her family got chased out of Abbeville, South Wait a Carolina minute. by the Damn, Korean editor, you just cut that shit off, huh? That must not have been important, huh? Father's mother talking about her family and hearing about how my grandmother what and the hell, editor? Got chased out of Abbeville, South Carolina by the Klan in 1907 because they were trying to teach African Americans how to read. And so I, I, I suppose I had an interest in history, listening to those stories. And, and my mother called me an elephant because she claimed I never forgot anything. And I remembered things even as far back as a year and a half. Her passion for learning and drive for discovery eventually led her to being introduced to the story of Pocahontas Island. Okay. I have been there briefly uh, many years ago. And, um, and I've always been fascinated anyway by that area, that General Richmond Petersburg area, because uh, Shout it, out to it, Richmond. it occupies a... Uh, a space that I guess you could consider to be a hub. Having worked so much in academia, Professor Newby Alexander has some special reservations about some of the claims certain others have made about the island over the years. Uh -oh. I think it's very important to be as accurate as possible when you make claims of being the first or the only or the oldest 
I think that uh -uh. Um, relativist terms are actually better to use, one of the oldest. And that's why I think it's always important to not say something definitively when there are question marks, when you don't have that proverbial smoking gun. Is that why you may have not an issue, but like a slight reservation when you see signs that say the oldest free black community in the United States posted on the island and stuff uh, like that? Absolutely. Um, in part because in Virginia, um, the first settlements uh, that you would see of English people and then English and African people was further into Hampton Roads as opposed to in the oh, ho, 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 hold up. According to their story, according to their story, they weren't the English. They weren't the English. You're only saying the English because it was the London company that sent people. But it could have been various people, not just English. It could have been, and then on top of that, they weren't called English back then either. But it could have, I mean, for lack of better, I mean, because technically it would be Britain, British. Let's just say it was British, France, or uh, uh, French people, because that's mainly what it was. Uh, some followers of the uh, Spanish, which is Spain, came over but all by way of the London company, Virginia company of London. That's what she's referring to is along the Hampton roads. But we can't say that they didn't come over in Richmond, Virginia area or Pittsburgh, Virginia area. You can't say that because you also land claim that they were the first based off of the stories that they gave us in six, about 1619. When I told you that that was a lie, they didn't arrive in Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. At least that wasn't the first. Because come to find out, they landed in, in Fort Monroe prior to Jamestown. So you can't pinpoint who was what and what was who accurately neither. As far as the first is concerned, And what if I told you that that same year that that story was created, they were using the term Negro at that time and not black nor African-American, nor African, in fact, because she said English and African. They weren't, I'm talking about at all when they was creating these stories. I wonder why. Now, since she want to go the Africana route, that's what she going to latch on to because of her little African studies. Is she going to go that route? She going to latch on to uh, uh, Africans' first arrival in Jamestown, Virginia. But that's being biased. That's being biased based off of the information that you were given, based off of the information that you were study, studied, so you could pass a test in order to be considered uh, what? An expert in that information that they gave you? No, you didn't get a classification in that. Keep in mind, it's African studies, so you're still studying. There's no point when you come out of that and say, all right, it's over with. I know the whole thing. Nobody has done that. No matter what. African studies mean you're still studying, you're still learning about what happened. This means that you do not know just because you hold some type of credentials, again, some type of entitlement, rank, status, alpha, that don't mean that you're right. Off the break. Come up off your little high horse and come on back down to reality. Now, these are the type of people, like, but with her being a historian in Norfolk State, I would definitely debate her on the 1619 Project. I will eat her high yellow ass. I will chew her alive. Yet most of what we perceive in history is in reality stories. 
Betsy Ross didn't design the first U.S. flag, George Washington never cut down a cherry tree, and the sailor kissing the nurse on BJ Day did not know her, nor did he have her consent before doing so. Yet the aura around these stories are so in which for many, it is better to live within the realm of legend rather than reality. So to live in Pocahontas, wow. and they selling slavery, slaves only about less than a mile away from it. You hear slaves, they say on, on a clear day, you can hear them being whipped. And even down on the Appomattox River, there was slaves down there and free Negroes. They say, um, that's what he said. Island. So to live here with the freedom we had, it was a gift from God. That's why we always felt like we, this was the promised land. Uh, and a lot of slaves ran away from throughout Virginia just to get a taste of the promised land. So having a space, an actual space that people can go to is important. That's why you have monuments. So uh, that people can gather at those monuments and they retell a story. And African Americans have done that. Um, and that's a, a part of human. But that's history. new. That's new. What these. are you talking about? This is new. This is not old. Like you trying to make it seem like it's old. This is new. What are you talking about? These spaces, these gathering places that uh, allow them an opportunity to retell a what story. They, what, retell a story. What they did right there is basically no different from what Richard Stewart did in his little museum. They, except for this time, they got actual posters, professional posters printed versus carrying poster boards and cardboard boxes. It's the same shit. Story. And that's what makes um, um, history interesting when you don't have the proverbial smoking gun telling you exactly why something is the case and a lot of stories come out as a result of that okay um, some myth some uh with some grain of truth in it um i could agree with that, that. Find that grain of truth yes oh is. absolutely and do you think that that's just as maybe if not more important than just reading a, a textbook with just dates but to actually have a recording of those oral traditions passed down from one oh, yeah. to another? Yeah, it's, it is so true. A young lady came by the other day there and she asked a question, but same as they did back in 1937, the WPA Act. Some people going around recording the last of the slaves. And if they wouldn't have done that, I got the book, Last of the Slaves, How They Saw Slavery, that would have been gone. And I think it's so important now in a lot of these villages and different things like this, they need to record folks. I am what you call uh, from the World War II to 1940s. We have fallen like flies, you know. You need to record the history in each locality. Each village has its own history. It's not in the book. And each village's history is different from another. It village. is. Each village's history is different. It's different. It is. And it'll never be in a book. Okay. In 1831, in Southampton. His last words. Okay. I'm going to just let this sink in real quick. Let me let this sink in real quick. Noose tied around his neck. I thought they said they chopped his body up. Some people said they hung him. But you knew his last words? And that's propaganda to put this picture right beside it as if that was Nat Turner. And when was this created? Are we supposed to assume that that's a sculpture of Nat Turner? Who made this and when? 
and they have to have a premises to base this off of. Who, who, what model were they using? You question everything. That's what I'm here to do. In Virginia, a slave by the name of Nat Turner lived. Heavily influenced by the Bible, Turner began to set in motion an act that would lead into the new phase of all blacks living across the South. After Nat Turner, he reinterpret religion. See, so he reinterpret religion. No one before Nat Turner never saw a role as a black man in religion. I That's mean, Cam. On, on left the, board of, the book of Revelation, that defined a man of white woolly hair and brown skin. And, but Ned Turner saw, took that Bible and said, if Moses can do it, God's gonna give me the power to do it. And I'm gonna walk in Jerusalem just like John. Now, Petersburg, he was hoping that free Negro from Petersburg, Norfolk, and all that joined him. But they never did. How you know that then? Uh, because of strenuous uh, uh, fear and intimidation. Fear? No, 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 no. You gonna say that other people ain't joining him fear of what? Intimidated by who? According to the story, the, Virgin the Virginia militia didn't come down there for a whole nother week. And by the way, they were coming from Richmond, Virginia. Intimidated by who? If that actually happened, intimidated by who? Keep in mind, originally, I told you guys that the original story about Nat and him being a preacher came from the Richmond wig, which is right beside this area. I showed you that big ass newspaper. And I showed you the article. They were building up a story to start race riots. So the militia can go in. Based on, and look, they did that same thing in Tulsa. They did that same thing when before they started coming up with redlining and urban removal. This was the basis of that. They, the keep in mind, they said that it was a Negro problem. So they got to ship them out. It was too many of us. That was the Negro problem. It was too many of us that did not want to listen to no fucking foreigner. Excuse me. And we wasn't having that shit. And the only people that started up this rumor, these rumors, were the newspaper writers. The newspaper started up these rumors. That's where the mass majority of the vast majority of the people got the information from. And certain people believed in that. Especially uh, the Quakers. The Quakers were the head runners. Of these false, the, the, these lies. And all of this was prior to the American Colonization Society. And keep in mind, ain't that right around the same time? But at the same time, it was also prior to that. Prior to that. Prior to Washington, D.C. being called Washington, D.C. It was the city of Washington. They were sending letters to the president. They were sending letters to Thomas Jefferson. Also, keep in mind, he was saying that how Thomas Jefferson had slaves and all of a sudden they ran from him, ran to Petersburg, ran to Richmond. Now that that stuff is verifiable, this is all alleged, by the way. But if that's the case, if, 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 this, if this is actually true, what are they running away from? What was the threat? Him? Thomas Jefferson? What was the threat? What was the army? What was the army of soldiers? Who was the soldiers? Who was enlisted at that time? Where's that list of those people? Where they graves at?
Notice how you wearing a uh 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 infantry 24 uh infantry hat. You said you was a part of World War II, right? That means when you pass, you're gonna get honored. They know where they're gonna bury you at. And with you being in Virginia, they might put you in the Arlington Cemetery. Where the militia at? Where they buried at? The v Richmond, Virginia militia, where they buried at? That was back then. And I want to see who they were. And then you talk about people. Tra you listen, y'all. I want y'all to understand something. They were saying that the Richmond militia traveled from Richmond to Southampton, Virginia. If you know how big that is, ain't no way in the world. Could that be the reason why it took them a week? Because what you going to say how they traveled there? How did they travel? By train? By horse? Because it wasn't no cars. Again, did they travel there by train? By horse? And then as soon as they got there, they were immediately able to stop Nat Turner? They were able to pinpoint where he was located? They going to say somebody snitched on him? Never said who snitched on him. Going to say that he hiding up under some debris. We talking about Southampton, Virginia. If y'all understand, y'all remember my video. I'm talking about rural land here. I swear to God, me and you could go out there right now and go play hide and seek. You won't find me. Right now. The only way you're going to find me out there in Southampton is if you put a tracker on me here. I'm talking about Southampton. There's no way. There's no way that you're going to be able to find somebody out there here. We guess country, country. Acres and acres and acres and acres and a ain't no way. And all of a sudden, Somebody from Richmond, Virginia is going to be able to track Nat Turner down? And he got folks with him and they armed? No way. You don't know what they armed with. Soon as they arrived to Southampton, where they at, y'all? They over there. No way. No way. Within a 48-hour span and them reaching Southampton, they were able to get him. That's bullshit. That's bull. Look at how many. That's 70 acres where this property is located. Rural area. Now, before they tore all them goddamn trees down in which they about to get into, I'm about to tell you how that happened. I believe all of that was purposely done. You're going to see that, though. I want y'all to make the judgment on that. I want y'all to make the call on that. But there's no way that you're going to find somebody in There's no way you're going to find anybody in Virginia if they haul off and start running in the rural areas of Virginia here. Yeah? Ain't no way. Unless you got a chopper that got thermals on it or you got a tracker on that person you got hound dogs looking, scouting. You got to have shit that they ain't had back then that they got right now. But I'm telling you, again, if it was just me and you playing hide and go seek, you ain't going to find me in Southampton today. Even if we played Marco Polo, you gonna say Marco? I'm gonna say Polo. The echo gonna be so far you can't tell where that's coming from. I could be in the tree. 
That's no bull. Southampton is a whole lot of rural area. A lot. A ton. When you see me out there on South Hat on, on uh what route was that? I forgot what route that was. Nothing but tractor trailers coming through there. Trailer after trailer after, and they speedballing. They ain't doing no speed limit. That's how you know you in the country. Speed limit 70, niggas doing 120. And 16 wheelers. My wife was like, be careful. I said, I'm going to be all right. I was right there on the road. They flying past me. And when I was in Jerusalem, the same thing. It wasn't a boop, 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 blow the horn. They don't give a... They flying. The people that own the farms ain't there, out there ain't want to get on camera. And they look like you and I. They own them farms, by the way. And that was 2017. Was it 460? No, I could have sworn it was something like 41 or 21 or something like that. I'm talking about right there where the uh, historic marker was. Right there in, in the uh, cotton fields. I was right there. Uh, that's uh, That was route something. Route, uh, it was like something short. It was, a, it, it was a shorter number. I can't remember. That was, that was 2017. But I can tell you right now, them fools was flying through there. And we had to park our trucks. Like, this how I know, this how I know that they wasn't, man. We, the way we had to park our trucks to get away from that, that, main little, that main little road, we had to literally go up on banks and park our trucks right there and then walk over. And it was hot. Grass was to our knees. And then we got to the cotton fields. And that took about 15 minutes. And then when it started getting dark, my wife was giving me the signal. Like, see, try to stay on tempo. <laughs> I'm trying. Look, we couldn't even catch the fray. They shut the fray down because a storm was coming when we was out there that, that first day. So they shut the fray down because we was about to do something on the fray too. Yeah, Route 35. Yeah, that was 35. That had to be. Something like that. I knew it was two numbers. I'm talking about right there at the historic market here. But uh, so when we came back around and it was, you know, it started getting dark. It looked like the swamps in Florida here. If you ever seen the Florida swamps and I'm talking about getting dark, you hear the crickets and all them frogs and everything. My wife look at me. All right, then I understand you trying to document some stuff, but it's time to go. We ain't trying to stay out here because I'm telling you if something happened. Ain't nobody going to know till the next morning. If they find out the next morning. Ain't no telling what's going on. It, that is very. And when I was out there, read the comments. Read the comments. Everybody in the comments was like, Dane, be careful. Dane, be strapped. Dane, pray to God. A whole bunch of stuff. Dane, we go pray for you. We go make sure everything's done. It was dangerous out there now. We were strapped up, though. Everything was good. But so was they. Nigga, ain't no, ain't, yeah. And they ain't had no little pistols. They had everything in above up there. Or down there, rather. Yeah, I remember, I told y'all what happened when we got, when we pulled up to the, uh, one of them gas stations. And them ladies was being prejudiced at the gas station, wasn't trying to serve us. White folk. We shut that shit down. They tried to call the police on us. We was deep. Like, you ain't about to, nah. So, um, <clears throat> let me get this, this, that, and the third. And I'm going to watch you do it here. I don't care who you calling. Nigga, this ain't 17, 1800s. If I want my gas right here, I'm going to get my gas. This ain't your establishment. Nigga, you work here. You don't own this spot. But yeah, man, they, you know, and all of them strapped. Every single one of them strapped, and we ain't care, so was we. <laughs> we ain't about to play none of them type of games, but yeah, they was being prejudiced down there. No cap. They was definitely prejudiced down there, hands down. 
Hands down. And I see why, like when we came up on the, you know, so-called black folk out there, I see why they ain't want to do no talking. They seeing brothers like us nice and clean and everything. They're like, who is these niggas? Nah, get off my property. Please get off my property. Before we come up, what you doing here? Hold up, hold on. We just want to conversate about what? Hold up, hold up. Wait, this is a camera and everything now. Hold up, let's have a conversation. This is some real shit. And they got cornfields, cotton fields, you name it. They seeing brothers and sisters like us, like, what's going on? What, what you doing here? Yeah, but that's Southampton. I, I won't ever forget it. I won't ever forget it. Would I go back down there? Probably. I probably would. I probably would go back down Southampton. But the whole, the whole point is, is that Richmond is a lot better to, to me personally. Richmond is way better than Southampton. Southampton is country country. Richmond is jag country, but more city. Now, I want y'all to, yeah, it's around, it's around, uh, all of them next to each other, around Norfolk. It, it's not, but so you got to understand, when we driving, we driving. Back then, they were not driving. So when you talk about bringing the Virginia militia to go find runaway slaves, everybody would have ran. I'm going to tell you right now, if they was running from slaves, I mean, running from slavery, running for their freedom in Virginia, you ain't catching them. You are not catching them in Virginia. No, nope. I'm talking about pick a part. Pick one. Petersburg, Richmond, especially them areas. Nigga, what? You know how big that is? No way you catching them. You don't got enough. You not equipped for that at that time. If somebody say I'm gone tomorrow, they going to be gone tomorrow. I mean, take a look at Frederick Douglass. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Hold up. They said Frederick Douglass ran. He ain't never get locked up after he ran, didn't he? He ran all the way up there to New York. Oh, well, well, he went through Pennsylvania to New York, according to the story. And he ain't never get locked up. They ain't never come back for him. So if he could do it, anybody could have did it. And he ain't know them routes. They gonna tell me something. Harriet Tubman was freeing some slaves. Left her family in Maryland. They going to catch the train. She knew the routes? She knew the routes? Come on, y'all, go this way. Go this way. They never told you how. See there? Never. They never told you how she did that. They skipped that part. Freeing everybody but her family? What you gonna say? Her family was hard headed. What you gonna say? Well, I mean, that's how they tried to make a scene in the movie. What I tell y'all about Hollywood yesterday and day before that? <laughs> EJ said she used Google Earth. Something? Did they have walkie talkies back then? What happened? How she know where to go? And she a young buck. Just like uh, these pe these so-called people that's running from there, uh, running for their freedom. How they know where to stop at? All right, y'all, come on, y'all. Pocahontas Island is safe. Let's stop right here. That's it right here, y'all. Come on. I don't see no white folks, y'all. We good. What? How they know? I'm trying to tell you, in Virginia, biggest listen. Ain't no way, man. In intimidation. After interpreting a solar eclipse as a divine message, he led a group of 70 plus slaves in a campaign of violence, which resulted in dozens of men, women, and children being murdered. In his museum, Mr. Stewart shows us a physical remnant of this period in time. <laughs> These are slave shackles here. 18th century slave shack for Big Bubble. Ooh. Hey, $5,000 if you want to buy a pair now. That's what they cost. This represents the suffering 
of the black folks, the black slave that suffered on the Appomattox River only less than three quarters of a mile away from here, how they were shackled. Also, Ned Turner, did you help us? Did you hurt us? Now, for the man in bondage, and you stayed in there another 30 plus years after you, Ned Turner, I don't know. But these here represent slavery, but this year for to represent you. This is what Ned Turner kill a lot of his master and kids with. They chop them up with what you call broad axe. That's what this is. Knowing what those were used <sighs> for, the horrible things that have happened with them, how does that make you feel when you're holding them, knowing the history of what those were used for? When I feel the spirit of yesterday, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts to know what they went through. I have read. I want y'all to understand that the the people that they that look like you and I that are plants that are against our people won't hesitate to spit any lie out of their mouth, clean out of their mouth, just like that. Won't hesitate as long as they getting paid to. They will sell you short, sell you out, and sell their soul as long as they gonna go to their grave knowing that they did a good cause for themselves. I wonder how his family look at him. Because this is some bullshit. Do we got friends? This is crazy. And he's spitting them lies straight up. But no hesitation. That's how you know he's been doing it over and over and over. Ever since 2003. It was about slavery on the Appomattox. Down in this area, some of them tried to escape and come into Pocahontas, and they put them snails around the neck. But with me preserving Pocahontas. Put them snails around their neck. How you know that? Who told you this? Where's the evidence of that? Who's telling you this story? That you regurgitating. Where's the evidence of this, man? Honey, and the spirits of yesterday is still here. And I can tell a story of suffering. I believe I'm accommodating what they want. That's huh? my belief. But that's me, these things that make me feel sad. You're accommodating what they want by re regurgitated information based off of your so-called white friends that told you to put that in the museum? This is what your ancestors wanted to do? Preserve the lie so it can continuously hide the truth. Very sad that the, that the arm prints of some slave is inside these. Shops. Some slave. The rebellion began on August 22nd, 1831. Within 72 hours, their forces were crushed. They painted the picture to make the, you know, for you to use your imagination as to what took place. They painted the picture. Put it in a book and said, this is what happened, y'all. Or at Massacre in Virginia. One arm, Nat Turner. They got the numbers to let you know at the bottom who was who. This is a story being pieced together. Earlier he said the real story is you're not going to be able to find in the book. So what you call this one? Overwhelming force from militias supported by U.S. artillery fire. Mr. Stewart shows us a list of those involved with the rebellion. He has a list of them. Free Negro, children, some out, either you was acquitted. List of Negroes brought before the court of Southampton with their owners' names and sentence. So the owner's names, look, look, the owner's names are in the middle. 
They're accompanied by first and last name. They're sentenced by right. The only person that has a last name, Thomas, oh, Thomas Haithcock. Oh, no, and Barry Newsom, Exum Artes. Isaac Turner and Nat Turner. Where did this come from? Has this been cross-referenced? Again, anybody could create this stuff up real quick and say that this was true. Because if it was a list of Negroes brought before the court of Southampton, how did you get this notice? Where did this come from? If it was given to the court, this will be publicly verifiable by court documents. Instead, it's not. This is a page of a book. Ladies and gentlemen, the same book that you just saw earlier about Nat Turner. Again, anybody could create this shit. This is the same book. Um... What's his name? Uh, some of these were referenced in the book called uh, A Negro's History, Carter G. Woodson. And um, another one by Carter G. Woodson. I'm trying to think of the Negro, the name of it. It was Negro, uh, hold on, A Negro History and a Negro Past or something like that. I can't remember the other one because he did it twice, renamed it differently. None of that stuff was cross-referenced. It was just something that was given to you. I'm talking about no documentation indicating that this is real. None. Even the picture that was drawn of Nat Turner was in uh, Carter G. Wilson's book. Same picture. And that was the first image that was given to you of what Nat Turner could have possibly looked like. But what did he base that off of? The, the one that drew that picture. Um, the one I showed you that the guy that was claiming that he was a descendant of Nat Turner and he showed it on the news of what Nat Turner looked like, it was that same picture that came out of uh, the Negro, no, not Negro history. It was... um. I don't have that in front of me. Let me see. Miss, was it miseducation of the Negro? Hold on. Let me, let me make sure of that. Let me double check. I, I want to give you the name of that. It came right out of that book. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, hold up. Yeah, Thomas Ruffa Gray. All right, hold on. I'm, I'm getting close to it. They go to Richmond wig. And by the way, if y'all want to learn about the Richmond rig, wig part, go to page 17 of False Heroes, False Hopes. Uh, give me a second. I believe that was... um. It could have been the miseducation of the Negro. I'm trying to grab that quickly so I can move on. Hold on, confess. No, 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 not confesses. That's that's Thomas Gray. Um, shoot. All right, remind me to come to that after this, cause I could uh, I could pull that up. I know I have that, and I know I got it on one of my hard drives. I could easily pull that up, but I thought I was gonna be able to grab it quick. 
I'm double checking one more time real quick. It could have been the miseducation of the Negro. Could have been. But I know it was by... Is this it? No, that's not it. I know it was by Carter G. Wilson. And, um... Mm, okay, I don't... Yeah, all right, I don't have that in front of me right now. All right, so I'm going to come back to that. But that's where this came from. He was transported out of the state. Right there. It wanted to see. see you see how that was a folded up piece of paper with a clip on it? You saw that, right? And then you just threw it on the ground. That same, this same image, too. That was in there, too. Um, damn, I'm trying to. Okay, look how he just threw it down. Folded up. So that's printed out, right? That's a printed out piece of paper. It's folded up right here at the bottom with a paper clip on it. It wanted to see free blacks, not the Turner Revolt, but the whites in control wanted to use that, that rebellion as a way of dealing with the growing presence of free blacks. Do they know the aftermath and start celebrating the horror of Matt Turner? How did it affect the free Negro in the state of Virginia? And in Southampton, it hurt us more than it helped us. Even though Nat Turner's slave revolt was based upon his, he was inspired by the Bible, but the aftermath, we were once again put in the same category as a slave, a free Negro. For every one slave master and children that Turner killed. If you go from the Mississippi to Louisiana to North Carolina, Virginia, and throughout the eastern seaboard, eastern coast, probably you got more than five black, blacks was killed for every one person or even more. Then in Southampton, you probably hundreds of people was killed there. Even we lost our reputation here in Pocahontas as a well, more or less, the white men get along with us. That's what I said. They didn't trust us any longer. And they watched us. They placed restrictions. At a certain time, we could not go out in the street. The black codes was in force. They watched us. You could not have a gun. You could not do anything. The aftermath of Nat Turner need to be taught. It lasted more than Matt Turner might have, slave revolt might have lasted less than 30 days but for nearly 30 plus years until the Emancipation Proclamation we suffered there was a tremendous now I want y'all to understand what he just did so now he's flipping the script and telling you guys that Nat Turner did something that actually affected us as a people what he's telling you is that what basically the story that they gave about Nat Turner okay allow for the so-called whites to come out and start killing the so-called blacks out of retaliation. That's to make you scared. That's called fear mongering. That's the all the more reason why they created the Nat Turner story. Okay. Once again, first by the Richmond wig and it took off by Thomas Ruffin Gray because he wanted to gamble with his money and he wanted money, you know, uh, to sell a book. He wanted to sell something to give his, give him some money because he was a gambler. He was losing money. Um, and he made a lot of money off of that. $30,000 was his profit at first at that time. Now, but the whole point is, is that that story was created, uh, to put our people in fear because we were retaliating. There were slave revolt, not slave revolts, but rebellions, uh, that was occurring, not necessarily Nat Turner being the only one, it was multiple ones happening at that time, especially in Virginia. But they only duly noted, okay, barely duly noted it, Nat Turner because they were able to control that narrative to make it seem like he was a, a, a man of God, you know, a follower of Christ. And then all of a sudden he was told to do this, to do the acts of Moses and turn his people around, show up and show off or kill innocent men, women, and children. Doesn't matter if they was his so-called slave master or not. 
He killed everybody that was in his sight. Allegedly. Allegedly. But keep in mind, that was all the more reason <clears throat> why those Christians and Quakers and uh, I know I'm missing somebody else was trying to make an excuse to uh, to force another way into the president's mindset to prevent the Negro problem from reoccurring every single week. The Negro problem was that it was too many of us being here and they wanted to ship us out out of America, not only west of the Mississippi River, they wanted to ship us out of America. They they had to come up with something, come up with lies so people could fall for it. And they took it to the newspapers. So they made it seem as if that happened so they could retaliate. Notice how he's saying that it was Nat Turner's fault. Basically, that's what he's saying. It's Nat Turner's fault as to the reason why the so-called white folks retaliated. But here's the thing. Here's the catch to that. Here's the catch to that. Not a lot of our people suffered from lynchings. Not a lot. And I'm I'm talking about less than 100. Not that. See, they tried to make it seem like it was thousands. And it happened in every state. That's a lie. Lynchings did not happen in every state. And it was less than 100 of lynchings. They tried to make it seem like it was a big ordeal. That's a lie. They And because, again, that's the newspapers doing that. Notice how he was showing you newspapers clip, newspaper clippings and where? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Did he show you some in Georgia? Did he show you some in Alabama? Did we, you see what I'm saying? I'm talking about things that was elevated or escalated, okay, to make it seem as if something happened that didn't really happen. Like that little boy, that, ha- uh, that, that situation that happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All of, they was trying to claim that that whole situation went down because some boy went up there, used the elevator where the white girl was on it, and he just so happened to brush her. That got back to the newspapers. They elevated that story to make it seem as if he was doing something wrong to that white girl. They killed him and hung three other people. Then they started a race riot. Race riot. They lied. They lied every single time. You could catch these newspapers and lies all the way for all the way to. I mean, I'm even still today, and we could go all the way back to the 1700s. They've been lying left and right. Lying, creating stories. Keep in mind, a person that doesn't have nothing to write about, they're going to create a story. Just like the writers are of movies, you know, movie script, or not not even the the, the stories. Yeah, the movie scripts as well, right? They got to create a story. Not every movie is based on a true story. A lot of things have, you know, been created that was fictitious that didn't actually happen. A lot of things. That's journalism work. They call it journalism. Then you got a term called yellow yellow journalism. I'm talking about you getting somebody else in trouble based off of a story that you created that ain't even exist. That ain't even exist. But that was the key anyway. They wanted that to exist so the president could hurry up and say and and act certain laws to get rid of the Negro problem. Negro Indian. You're going to see that they're they, they going to they play it the same way. It's going to be Indian problem, Negro problem. My wife pointed that out to you in her first video, actually, if you didn't see that. Um, I forgot which video I pointed that out on. I can't remember the name of it, but my wife reinsured that to you again. And then it's a couple of other things that we got coming out where we're going to be explaining it in more detail. But also the book about the Negro problem. Um, wait a minute, do I have? Yeah. Um, the Untold Truth of the uh, Transatlantic Slave Trade. It's called It Was Told in Reverse. Get that book as well. And you and go to that chapter about the Negro problem. The Untold Truth uh, of the Transatlantic Slave Trade. It's actually called It Was Told in Reverse. If you do not have that book, get the book. Get the book. And then we go break it down even more because we have even more research now. But I'm just saying, we gave you what we have for the past five years of research on that topic. And it's very good. They lied about that. Tried to make it seem like it was a problem. Again, it wasn't a problem. The problem was the fact that they were trying to bring more foreigners over here and it was already full. So they had to create a problem. 
to get rid of the people that they wanted out. This is another reason why you know that we're not foreigners. Because think about it. They bring foreigners over here every single day, st still to this day. Got the borders wide open here. Yeah. Got the borders wide open. But we got to go. Out of all these foreigners, listen, you going to kick us out. This is how you know we the indigenous people. Those so-called Native Americans can't say the same. Because they're not indigenous to this land. They're native to this land. The name within itself exposes them. Talking about something they of this nation. They of this. Anytime you hear somebody say they are a part of a nation, they are a part of the federal government here. Yeah? Because our families did not have nations. Our families had families. And a nation is not a family. A nation is a corporation. How do we know that? How many presidents just said, we did this with America and for this nation, we're going to blah, blah, blah. It's always talking about, uh-oh, you're going to think it's talking about this country, ain't you? Nah. It's talking about the establishment. The United States Incorporated. And for this nation, all nations are corporations and establishment. Right now. Right now. It's the same thing. If I haul off tomorrow and create a corporation, the only way y'all gonna be able to get in is if y'all become members of the corporation, right? There's gonna be some rules and regulations that we set. We're going to have the treasurer this, the president that. We even going to have a board. That's going, and, and we got a, part, a department, you know, of entry, you know, people coming in that's going to evaluate you. Listen, if we feel as though you fit, you're going to become a member. All members get particular benefits. Some members get particular specialized benefits. All ranking members get what's owed to them that they wrote down. So not all so-called Native Americans receive the same benefit, even if they do own an establishment called a casino. It doesn't benefit all members. It benefits the high-ranking members, the alphas. Who has that status? See how I go back? So again, if somebody flashing in your face that they are part of a nation, tell them so the fuck what? That still mean that you're subjugated to the government, nigga. You have to follow by their rules and regulations. You ain't shit. That means that you settled along with the colonizer and said, fuck it. We getting paid. What that mean? You a sellout. That's what that mean. That's what that mean. That don't mean you be happy because you hold an identification card. That don't make you no different from me. You holding an identification card ain't no different from me holding the driver's license. You don't got no special benefit because you're a member of a nation. Because look, if I'm holding the driver's license to a particular state, that means I'm a member of that nation, right? Don't forget, nations are corporations. So is a country. Because each country is a state. What state did they put you in? A citizenship. Citizenship, making you a member of that nation. Again, no different than the position I'm in right now. Hmm? You ain't no better than me. And then on top of that, your nation is borrowing 
<laughs> and stealing cultures from other so-called nations that they stole from. Mm-mm. They ain't don't no nation got their own culture. Everybody doing the same thing. That's why I told y'all to don't be proud. Talking about some powwow. When we call that junk the cookout. Family reunion. You don't know where that term powwow came from. What language was that? When indigenous tongue did that come from? See there? And look how every nation say powwow. Look! Here. Yeah. Look! That's how you know they fraud here. Yeah? I'm going to such and such powwow. You fraud. You ain't supposed to be here. Not a, not a tribe wore the same headdress neither. Not a tribe wore leather. Y'all liars, imposters. You know you ain't supposed to be here. You playing a role. Just like how they told this brother Richard Stewart. To play that role, we going to give you a house and some money. That's what they did to them natives. That came over here from Asia. Some are from Mexico. Look, what I showed y'all yesterday, they still coming. I showed y'all the videos that they still coming. That they still coming. You got over 350 plus federally recognized tribes and all of them look Asian and so-called Mexican. Something wrong. Uh-oh. And then when you go down to that lawyer, they don't look high yellow like her. Them lawyers look white as in... They look called Caucasian, don't they? Latinos don't like you latching on to something that ain't theirs. Latinos will call you out. That ain't indigenous to them. They don't like that. The real Latinos will bust you upside your head talking about something you Native American. Huh? But you signing NDAs and not trying to tell the people. See, this is the reason why, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. This is the reason why they want me to shut up. But see, I ain't signed no NDA. I turned that shit down. And I told you when I was not joking, I told you that they offered me millions of dollars to shut up. Big house in California. Big, ho big house in Las Vegas. Shut up, Dane. It go 14 million. Fuck it, I tell you, he goes seven million. Shut up, Dane. What is it that you want, Dane? You want fame? Here, we'll, we'll make your numbers go up higher. Just shut up. Just, just go about it this way. Say it this way. But here, sign this NDA and promise us that you're gonna go this route. Do I look like a fucking agent to you? I can't understand how people like that sleep at night. Knowing that I'm selling my people out as long as I'm getting money for it. And I'm laying right next to my wife and looking at her like, yeah, baby, let's. uh, I'm not going to feel right. That That's not in my blood. <laughs> it don't work like that with me. It might work like that with you. Because all you seeing is money green in your eyes. But what's money to a person that can have the money and have it all based off of the criteria that they create for themselves because they in control of it? I left nine to fives years ago. I don't got no balls. Can't nobody tell me what to do but me. I hired myself as the president while you tell the residents that they better vote. I 
I'm not over here trying to sell my soul for some money. That ain't me. Won't ever be. What's I find out? Say, for example, I was working with you at first and I find out you sold your soul. I'm shutting you right off. I can name some people that's some so-called celebrities. I can add them out right now. That I cut clean off. And got proof here. I'm talking about proof, proof. <laughs> By video. I can start airing them out. White folks too. White folks try, you know, try to put their arm around me and be like, hey man, come this way. No cap. You wouldn't believe who it is. Oh yeah, this new year coming. We about, I'm telling you, we about to make major moves without these motherfuckers. We, I don't need you. I don't. I don't, I don't got to get in good with the Semites. With the other Semites that want to call themselves that. I don't got to get in good with them. Tell me something, we anti-Semites when we the original. Don't get me started. You learned a lot of stuff that you know about through us, nigga. Even Skull and Bones talking about some anti. Anti what? You got to show respect to them because they went through a Holocaust. Nigga, so did we. The Holocaust still happening right now. Tell me one person <laughs> that's of high rank that apologized because of it. I wait. Not even Obama apologized. I knew Obama was fake the day that he they told him to drink some a glass of water to prove that Flint, Michigan's water was clear. That nigga ain't take a sip. He let that water touch his lip. It went right back into the glass. Am I lying? From that point forward, I said that motherfucker bought and paid for. I said that's that was it. I was trying to give them a, I was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, thinking they put that black nigga in there. Shit was about to no. I was just like everybody else, like trying to give him a chance. Like when I seen that shit, I said nah. And still to this day, Flint, Michigan water. It, listen, y'all. Not even Trump went to go shut down that governor when it was the governor's fault here. That's what make me, you know, kind of question Trump. Like, nigga, what? What you doing? Flint, you don't care? You, I mean, I'm not trying to call you racist, Trump, but goddamn, that water not clean. Do something. I remember I brought that up. Man, let me not, let me keep a couple things on myself. But let, again, this is the all the more reason why we need to be in control of the narrative. We can't let these uh, these people like this control the narrative. And we think of everything sweet. Running with it. Going with it. Showing off like, yeah, they got it, y'all. No, no, no. We put them in, we voted for him. Hey, it's gonna be okay. Flint, where you at? Y'all, y'all in the chat? Michigan, anybody in and, and look, look, anybody in Michigan, tell me is that water clean in Flint? Go ahead, I wait. Go ahead. Tell me is the water clean? Say it in the chat. Anybody. If you a Michigan, tell me if the water clean, y'all, in Flint. Still, look how long that's been now. Look how long that's been now. We talking about years. And that water's still not clean. And ain't nobody talking about that. That's not a viral topic. That's not something we need to get done with any motherfucking president. From Obama to Trump to Joe Biden. And not one thing got done. 
Listen, from Obama to Trump to Biden, you know how many years that is? I got to bring this up. I know I didn't did that a couple times already, but I got to refresh your memory because some people forgot. They forgot. They killing. Listen, hold up, y'all. Calm down. Hold up. <sighs> All right. They killing our people with that. They killing our people. That's a what? And you don't think that's a Holocaust? You don't think it, you don't think it's still happening? Huh? For the people, hey, out of respect, y'all, for the people that we lost due to the bullshit that this government been pulling, real quick, before I move on, put up your bow and arrow, spam this chat up, y'all. Put up your bow, for the, out of respect for the people that we lost, even during the COVID crap. Put up your bow and arrows, your feathers, your turtles, fire emojis, heart, e heart emojis. Okay, show some love to everybody that we lost and let them know that we got them, y'all. Hold up, we, they ain't gonna die in vain. Tell them we got them. They ain't gonna die in vain. We got them. They ain't gonna die in vain. We got them. Let them know. It's up. We love y'all. We really do. God did not die in vain. Our people are waking up, which is a good time for them to wake up right now. We got work to do. And our ancestors, y'all ain't dying in vain neither. We got y'all. Trust me. Trust us. We got y'all. All right. I just wanted to give them that respect, man, because they deserve it. Old and young, they deserve it. I'm talking about babies out there suffering because of that uh, water. And flint. Babies. Okay. It's been 30 days, but for nearly 30 plus years until the Emancipation Proclamation, we suffered. There was a tremendous fear that all these free blacks in Virginia would be a problem, that they would destabilize the slave system. Would be a, you heard her? You, you heard her, right? See how she snuck that in there? Go ahead and say that it was a Negro problem. Go ahead and say it. You heard what she said? Listen real quick. Tremendous fear that all these free blacks in Virginia would be a problem, that they would destabilize the slave system. Look, look what I say. Without her saying it, that was the Negro problem that they created. They trying to say it was the, that was the problem. They were going to shut shit down. Let's create an excuse. Because we got to bring more foreigners in here. Let's make up a lie. And so they decided to use that as a way of helping to change that. Keep in mind also. South and they used that 
as a way to help change that. That's coded. They would destabilize the slave system. And so they decided to use that as a way of helping to change that. They decided to use that as a way to change that. That's coded. One more time. Would be a problem that they would destabilize the slave system. And so they decided to use that as a way of helping to change that. Keep in mind also Southampton County had the largest percentage wise of free blacks than any place else in the country. Oh, oh, Southampton had the largest percentage of free blacks than anywhere else in the country. She said that. I'm not saying that. She said that. Now, that's not verifiable. I, I mean, I will have to look into that. I'm just saying. But that's a big deal, because if you look at Southampton, you talking about some way before the cotton fields got there, y'all. I'm talking about the majority ain't nothing but farm. I mean, it's agriculture. It's rural area, but they are definitely producing for a lot of America and Southampton here. Low key. You name the crop, they got it here. And that all that's all the more reason why you know that these are our lands. And they wanted to take that from us because that's the control of the trade. Agriculture is a part of the trade system. Controlling particular crops that made the amounts of money that they needed to progress. They needed control over that. Especially in Virginia. Don't forget, they started in Virginia. All of this started in Virginia. All of it. They, it was British America by way of the Virgi Virginia colonies. Don't forget, I told you that I showed you the map that the entire East Coast was called Virginia. Years ago, I, that was when I first got on the scene. I showed you the map, the entire East Coast, top, bottom, north, central, south, Virginia. They mark that territories, you know, by way of that maps. We ain't agreed to that shit. We ain't know what they was doing. That's why I said they came with flowers and the gun was in their back pocket. They got friendly with you. So there was a, a rhyme to, you know, a reason to their to their actions. Uh, they wanted to stop free blacks from learning how to read and write. So they passed a law closing down all schools for free blacks, even though not a single free black was even remotely accused of being involved in the revolt. But they used that as an excuse to deal with what they considered to be a big security issue. Now, if it was a big security issue with allowing the so-called free black blacks to learn how to read and write, now, you just admitted to stop them from learning how to read and write. That means that the next generation. Listen, that means that the next generation. Their schooling will be infiltrated, not the same generation. Because it was too late. So this was a plan that lasted more than one generation. Look, you can't just tell me who, who taught Frederick Douglass how to read and write. Tell me. His mother? No. Nope. Can't take it now. Mm -mm. You can't name the person. I'm talking about by name. And they turned around and told you that Frederick Douglass taught himself. But then a lot of our people.
Wait a minute, teach us how to read and write. Wait a minute, what if we already knew how to read and write? In which we did, that's a minute. We already knew that. The only people that you could control are the people that don't know how to read and write, which will be the children. So that's showing you, again, I'm going to say this again, that it wasn't about that generation. It was about the next one coming up. My wife showed you on her latest video who became the alpha. They needed control over that, your mindset. That was the war. That was the war. It wasn't all done by swords. It wasn't all done by guns. It was done by the power of the pen and paper directed at children. Our ancestors didn't lose grip by way of the sword. It was the power of the pen. Who had control over the narrative? That's how you know this is spiritual warfare. Again. What happened after Ned Turner? A lot of your whites among us started to relocate towards the mountain, towards Charlottesville, Gordonsville, and so forth. A lot of them left here because they felt there was a terrorist among them. So a lot of them. It turned neighbors against neighbors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't know who to trust. So a lot of people left here, and then at then it really built up, vice versa. A lot of blacks moved in here after Ned Turner because retaliation was throughout the state of Virginia and so forth. So a lot of them flopped in here. And that is when we became the majority over here in Pocahontas. That also exposes that you know that we were in control. I'm talking about as far as the population is concerned. Our population count outnumbered them back then. They didn't know where to go. Some of them realized that we were in the mountains as well. But this is how you know that we were living what? Amongst each other. But they went their way, we went ours. Segregation. They went their way, we went ours. That's why I say it. Segregation is something that we need to get back to. That made them shook. Sure. That made them foreigners, sir. Sure. They couldn't do nothing about it. You talking about the state of Virginia couldn't do nothing about it. Keep in mind, the Virginia Company, the Virginia Company of London is in London. <laughs> they were trying to control it by remote control before remote controls came about. Can't do it. You can't do it from long distance. Guess who was in charge? All right, now. As Pocahontas Island continued to live in freedom, thousands of others continued to live in bondage all around them. However, the residents seeing this injustice did what they could. According to local lore, they became a major fixture for the Underground Railroad. You have to understand the route of the Underground Railroad. Petersburg living in the most commercial district, what do you have? You got railroad, you got waterway, you got highway, right? Where do most of your rivers pass? A plantation. Where most of your railroad tracks pass? A plantation. Most of your slaves, maybe they didn't know where they was at, but they followed the river. And the river brought them right towards Pocahontas. <laughs> Plantations ain't nothing but farms, y'all. Plant.
And it wasn't just so-called Caucasians that owned them. We had them. We had the majority. We're going to run away from our own lands. No, we're going to stay right there. That's why I said the majority of the people stayed on the East Coast. Tell me so they sent their body to the West of the Mississippi River. No, they didn't. These unexceptional looking homes were in fact key destinations in the Underground Railroad. For many, they Chat. became an important refuge in their pilgrimage northward, a pilgrimage towards the fundamental human right of freedom. <laughs> it's pink. Pink house. The color's pink. Um, most of the people that have been documented left aboard a ship. Um, the chances were far greater that you would be successful if you left aboard a ship. Um, it would take less time. Okay. What they did, they organized what they're going to carry them and they build what you call a false bottom in the boat. They'll build boats with certain people because remember now, the Irishmen and so forth and so on, they were both, and they would take them and put them down and build a flooring cross. And that's how we was able to take them from the Appomattox River to the James River to the York River on out to Chesapeake. This was the number one, the waterway was the number one highway out of here. And because of the people that lived among us made us very successful. No one had ever been captured leaving Pocahontas. It was so effective. You know, I had been hearing a few rumors <laughs> about that, but it wasn't until I was contacted by the Washington Post reporter um, that I really started um, uh, reading up on the efforts by Mr. Stewart to preserve that land and to talk about this being a space for the Underground Railroad. Um, and that caused me to go back and look at a lot of the documents I had collected over the years on the Underground Railroad, and I said, I don't remember seeing any references to this, but I'll go back and check. Um, and I thought, well, maybe they don't make a reference to the island per se, but maybe there's a, a reference to some of the people who lived on that island or the space. Um, and But in Petersburg, free blacks lived in a variety of places. Uh, while they were localized, of course, to the downtown area, that was not seen as the downtown area. And so it, it, it opens the door for the possibility, but I haven't actually seen the definitive explanation, not, well, not definitive explanation, uh -oh. but the definitive documents uh -huh. that suggest that maybe uh -huh. that actually happened in that space. Okay. I bet, I bet. This is the entrance to the secret basement of House on Witten Street. The story goes, this is where escaping slaves would seek refuge. The fireplace is built directly underneath another one, so that the smoke and noise would not draw attention. And House across the street was built by a white man, but it was for a uh, commercial purpose. But black folks lived there, the Browns and the Williams and so so therefore, uh -oh. that was called, when you couldn't hide them above the ground, you had them in the ground. Hold up, y'all. I want y'all to understand. I want y'all to understand. What's not being told is the year this house was built. Remember, I told y'all the years of the houses that were built when it came to Nat Turner um, story. Okay, ranging from uh, 1785 and all those other ones that they were trying to pick and utilize. And I showed you the pictures coming from their own documentations of the preservation uh, projects. I'm trying to tell you what year was this house built is not known. Why not? The reason why is because that would tell a lot if this actually linked up to the Underground Railroad. But let me keep going. They have a cellar in there, has three floors camouflage, you would never know there's a, a floor beneath the house. 
the story about the um, the cellar and the um, and the the fireplace underneath one of the houses. Uh, actually, the first thing I thought about was the prohibition period because a number okay. of my colleagues who have looked at the Underground Railroad in a lot of northern areas, you know, so you have Ohio and then you have all the northern areas. Chicago. And everybody claims that their house or this house is, is part of the Underground Railroad. Yeah, Chicago, so New York, uh, the prohibition period was happening. Uh, some of you all may be familiar with that. Um some of them, yeah, some of them were tore down. Some of them are still up, but it was definitely underground where they were uh, a lot of the, uh, before you had the Italian mafias and the um, Irish mafia and stuff like that, before they started coming about and, you know, pushing out the moonshine and running away from the police, our people had those underground railroads um, doing a lot. More. They, I'm telling you, when I said they copied us, they copied us. They ain't know nothing about them tunnels. Until they saw us taking them. I mean, uh, well, up under places of establishment, play, uh, houses. I, I said established places. That's what I should have said. Established places like uh, bars and uh, uh, little clubs and uh, even hotels. And then all the way down to houses. It will just, you know, they'll open up some type of door and lead to downstairs. And it will go throughout the city. You know, we our people were in control of the moonshine. Our people were in control because uh, we had the corn, don't forget. We had the corn. The uh what they called my grandfather called that the um uh damn oh man, come on, think about it. It was called the white uh white lightning, white lightning. That's what it was called, white lightning. Oh man, thank you, granddad. White lightning, moonshine, them boys was making it in them bathtubs. Uh oh, uh, yeah, uh, that's right. Corn whiskey. And it was something else, y'all. It was something else. Hold up. Hold on. Moonshine, white lightning, corn whiskey. It was something else. We missing something. You know, I said moonshine. Yeah, corn liquor. Uh, I'm missing something. Yeah, they used it for cars later, goddess. That's true. I showed that too. That's in the video on my um on my channel right now. Nah, not dandelion. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they were. Well, they said they were, they were bootlegging, but technically they weren't. Technically, they weren't. That was prior to it being outlawed because we had, I'm talking about prior to it being outlawed, we had control over that. That was another trade. I'm trying to tell y'all that the government wanted, <laughs> they wanted control over because our people, our, I'm talking about you and I, our people, our ancestors had control over that. Um, now, before ethanol, they did, yes, that's how ethanol came about, yes. Yes, but that's uh, that's later on with NASCAR and stuff like that. I'm talking about prior to that. It was it was a few. It was it was corn liquor, moonshine, white lightning, and it was one other one. It was I'm telling you, it was one more. Damn it, I, I don't have that in front of me. White lightning, moonshine, corn liquor, and it was one more. I'm trying to tell you, it was one more. It was like a. Oh man! E either way, okay, so. The point was is that she's trying to say that that had to deal with uh, those uh, prohibition time, that time period. Was it Everclear? I remember seeing that. I remember seeing Everclear. I don't know. I don't know. All of it was fire water. All of it was fire water. Every single one of it was fire water. Nah, not gin. Not gem. Not rum, neither. Mash. It, it seemed like, uh, that's why I said, Jason, it seemed like I remember Everclear. Now, moon, the shine was moonshine. I remember that. Hooch? It was hooch? Now, that, the whiskey was corn liquor. Yeah, all of, every single one of them was fire water. We made that, though. That came from us. That literally came from us. Just like tobacco. We did, we did all of that. Cotton, all of that. Our people had all of that. They're not going to give us that credit, but I'm going to tell you right now, yes. And this is another reason why Hollywood tried to hurry up and paint the picture that uh, the moonshine was being ran by the Italian mafias, the Irish mafias, the, you know, the Jewish mafias, and all the rest of that. That's cap. That's cap. Before any of that, they had to get good with us. 
Before any of that, they got they had to get good with us. I'm trying to tell you. In order for them to get in there. And they will tell you that. They will tell you that. Especially up top in New York. Y'all should know that. And we and look, and we control at that time. I gotta this is this is the reason why I have to get into film. Because those type of stories have to be told. That's you can't find that in any movie. But they talking about our mafias. Oh, except for uh, what's the one Den- Denzel was in? Walked up on that guy. He 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 did some type of thing with sugar or something like that. Got up, walked outside, shot that guy in the head, came back and finished his drink. Um, and he was in that nice suit. That was kind of American Gangster, right? American Gangster. Yes. Notice how that's American Gangster. American gangster. You you don't think that them folks was ain't nobody touching. Listen, y'all, man. What? And I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. That's the time period I wear. That's Frank Lucas. That's the time period I wanted to be. Yeah, Bumpy Johnson. I I want me me personally. I would love to be in that time period. Fresh suits. Them them 1930 cars. 1940 cars. I, I have on the hat and I swear to woo. Young, all of us, and we walk up. Remember how they walked up in that, uh, in that store? Uh, what were they at? They, uh, some place, some establishment where they were eating, and how he ain't had to say nothing. His boys was already ready, opening up the door. They walked out there like, hey, God, hey, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you, clean. You hear me? I uh, man, that, that's getting me hype thinking about that. The boys that he ain't had to say shit. That nigga opened up the door all cute, nigga. Oof, oof. They walking up out there like the mafia. You think that ain't the mafia? All right, so listen. All right, so go back to that. They they learned a lot of that shit from us. I'm trying to tell you. Them Irish and, and all them Italians was coming over here. Paul, they ain't know nothing about that shit. <laughs> they know nothing about that. They came over here, Paul, learning that from us. Um... But yeah, so that's what she going to, the high yellow going to refer to that. She, she going to refer to that part. Let me come back. You know, so you have Ohio and then you have all the northern areas and everybody. And Southern too, house. and Southern too, and Southern too, they going to claim that their house was a part of the Underground Railroad. The reason why, you know, is because she going to say the prohibition, but you got to understand that whatever these preservation uh, uh, projects claimed that these houses What's going to be like, all right, boom, that house right there. They picked and chose which house, and came up with the story with it. Why don't you just say that, lady? Also, this house is, is part of the Underground Railroad. And so um, what they found was that many of them uh, were used during Prohibition, that a lot of these sellers were actually in tunnels were actually there for prohibition as, you know, secreting the liquor as a pay. And what I was trying to tell y'all is that um, the underground railroads eventually ran into actual railroads because that's how they got up out of there. OK, and I told y'all that it was called the pneumatic transit because at first they wasn't running off of coal. Eventually, I showed y'all that on. Uh, oh, man, what video was that? Matter of fact, Levante, remind me or see your boss styles, please. Y'all remind me to bring that video back up. I got to do that video again. I got to. Because y'all got to know, y'all got to learn about the pneumatic transit. Uh, pneumatic transit running off of air. You hear me? Moving trains on air. Our ancestors had that prior to any foreigner's arrival here. Any foreigner's arrival. Already moving on air before we even had the use of coal. I'm going to show you that, though. Those two existing prior Them tunnels to been existed. So you think, you think our tunnels... How, how did... Look, here's another thing. If they built it, if they built the tunnels at that time during the prohibition, how? How? Without getting caught. Without getting caught. Tunnels leading to underground railroads inside of the mounds? That would take a long ass time to get done. Listen, if I when I tell you that it was already there, I mean it. Already there. This is the reason why the majority of the stuff is underground that they putting underground right now. The except for the cell phone towers, but a lot of the um 
a lot of the cabling, a lot of the fiber optics, all that stuff they putting up underground. A lot of it. They doing that underground because it's already there. It was already there. Yeah, they did say Harriet Tubman was a train conductor. Whatever. I don't, it, whatever. But what about the rest of the train conductors? What were their names? Where'd they live? Where their pictures at? How come she the only one duly noted? Allegedly duly noted. All right, come on. It be, it be, come on. I'm hyped now. Dig. See how old that space is. Exactly. See how old the, the fireplace is. That will be a first clue. Because uh -huh. not always are you, you going to have, and especially with the Underground Railroad, not always are you going to have our um, documents to prove anything. It's hard to say about the Underground Railroad. Right it after that. through here because most of us are all history. And if you look at, if you ever read about history of Richmond, mm -hmm. look at how West Summit the slaves ran. They ran towards Petersburg. Why did they come towards Petersburg? It was easy out of the Appomattox River and probably going out to James. And it couldn't go to the mountains, you know? So something about Petersburg, it was easy to leave Petersburg. And it <laughs> wasn't gonna camouflage you at. Where are you gonna sleep at at night? Um, the South was a police state during the period of slavery. And this is what That's people cap. don't understand. That's you cap. did not have the right to speak out against that. Think about the story of the Keziah. In 1858, the schooner Keziah was secretly smuggling five slaves to freedom via the Underground Railroad. You got to understand that they had U.S. Marshals at that time. They had U.S. Marshals that looked like you and I. In fact, they showed that. Denzel played that part, too. He was a U.S. Marshal in um, um, Magnificent Seven. Is that the name of that movie? It was either Magnificent Five or Magnificent Seven. And he, was played, he played a U.S. Marshal, okay, showing you that the U.S. Marshals with us. That was the only time. At that, we talk about Western at that time, Midwest and the West. And it happened over here on the East too, but especially Midwest. Shout out to Texas. You know what I'm saying? Listen, the U.S. Marshals, but the, they acted just like the Buffalo Soldiers. Only an Indian can find another Indian. These foreigners did not know the territories. And only an Indian to communicate with another Indian in their indigenous tongue. And they also showed you that in Magnificent Seven. If you didn't see that movie, I ain't going to give it away. Go watch it. Very good movie. I mean, it seemed like everything that that's why I'm afraid that they about to do something. To you see how they messing up uh, Puff Daddy and all the rest of them? I hope they don't touch Denzel, young. Denzel is one of my favorite actors of all time. And I got a feeling they're going to make him go out bad, man. I, I, I'm, I hope not, but it just seemed like it's, it, it's lining up. They about to hit Denzel too some type of way. I hope not. But anyway. According to local lore, the men boarded the ship yeah, Bass from Reeves. Pocahontas Island. Clearly well, Indian. Absolutely. Everything uh, went as planned. But as his captain... Was sailing out the Appomattox River, he got stuck on the Matter of fact, bottom. they made Frederick Douglass a U.S. Marshal too, didn't they? I went over that at the, my video of Frederick Douglass. They um, again, only an Indian could go out and go speak to them Indians. Hands down. And getting stuck on a sand barge, he couldn't get it off. And when the inspectors came down and inspected, they discovered a way how we were running on the ground railroad. What we did, false bottoms and boats. William Bayless and his wait. Oh, let me let me go back. I ain't understand what he bottom. was saying. Slaves to freedom via the Underground Railroad. According to local lore, the men boarded the ship from Pocahontas Island. Well, everything uh, went as planned. But as his captain was sailing out the Appomattox River, he got stuck on a sandbar and getting stuck on a sand barge, he couldn't get it off. And when the inspectors came down and inspected, they discovered a way how we were running on the ground railroad. What we did, false bottoms and boats. That's he say, she say. And 
his shipmate uh, Simpkins and those five enslaved people were, when they were brought to Petersburg, there were thousands of people that waited, and they were, of course, white, waited for them. They were screaming that they should be lynched, that they should be killed, that they should be destroyed in some way. Imagine the, the fear Imagine. that they were facing from these mobs that could at any point in time mobs. overpower the um, police force that was supposed to be protecting There was no them such thing as a police force that was supposed to be protecting the what? The so-called white folks? They did not exist. They did not, you had sheriffs at that time if you, that you talking about. The U.S. Marshals was federal. The sheriffs of the county. The sheriffs had two deputies. And they had the jail. They didn't have no police force. That did not exist. And yes, you're right. They could it, uh, immediately overpower them at any time. That's how you know they didn't touch them. It couldn't touch them. The only time you start seeing people started touching our people is when they showing you in the movies that the good old boys, you know how they do it, the so-called good old boys was running rampant. You know what I'm saying? Through, throughout... Uh, Throughout our territories and trying to bother us and hanging us and trying to scare us by burning some of us up and, you know, lynching them. But that didn't happen everywhere. That only happened in certain areas. That didn't happen all the time. That only happened at certain times. Not everybody was scared. Most of the people had sharpshooters already sitting in them trees waiting for them folks to walk up so they could snipe them. Snipers! You ain't about to walk up on somebody's property that already got a pistol and gonna knock you down. Real quick, that's going to happen right now. That's going to happen right now. <laughs> what you mean? They don't care about no police. You walking up in somebody's hood that actually got that territory, they're going to act just like the police and knock you right up out of there. Let's, look, matter of fact, yeah, especially Los Angeles. I'm glad Corey brought that up. L.A. police officer, uh, no, not police. They, they, uh, was it the chief or somebody came out and said, one of them of high rank came out and said that they could not protect any person that is not uh, uh, that that's touring, touring in Los Angeles. They can't protect you. This is what's going on right now is that if you ain't with no click, I'm going to just say it that way. If you ain't with no folks out there that's already doing their thing and one side is there, another side is there, another side is there, the L.A. police can't help you. That's right now. That's right now. The L.A. police just as bad as everybody else. I mean, shoot. Same thing with Chicago. They, they Listen, I'm talking about where the police is actually the thugs now. They, they already in there. They in there. They, they, what, how you think we did it back in the past? They, they cut a little money out, you know, and, and paid the police officers off. Hey, leave us alone. Leave my boys alone that's in that warehouse. Leave my boys alone is bringing them. They still doing that right now. I just showed you people yesterday. Don't make me bring that video back up. Coming through a gate that's broken. With the police, I mean, patrol border folks right there looking. And you think they not getting paid off by, for example, the, uh, uh, what's them folks out there in Mexico? The, uh, the cartel? And look, and the cartel boys look like military, Nick. They look like military. They strapped up, strapped up, not just with guns. They look like the army and the Navy. I mean, you know, and the Marines out there. The cartel look like the army. How come, how come the United States ain't messing with them? Because they got an army. They ain't messing with them. The cartel been running it for years. You ain't stopped them. And then to go back to JFK, that, uh, matter of fact, I got something coming out on JFK. Uh, this is another reason why they got rid of him because, you know, he was knocking some heads of, you know, some Irish mafia, some Jewish mafia, some uh, um, Italian mafia, and the cartel with, uh, what's his name? Cat, Cass, uh, What's his name? They they were bump. He was bumping heads with a lot of people trying to stop their trade. Oh man, what's that boy's name? Cast Castro or something like that. I forgot his name, y'all. 
What's his name? Castell? Castell? Is it Castell? Is it, yeah, Castro. Okay, I was right. But they at that time, that's why they ain't get, they got rid of JFK. Right in front of his wife. Right in front of his wife. They ain't kill. Fidel Castro. Yeah, that's him. They were on top of that now. You ain't touching them cartels. You pick them. You ain't touching near one of them cartels. Uh, not, not even just the one in Mexico. You, you ain't touching near one of them cartels. And you think they scared because you got an army? They got one too. That's still going to go on right now. So, um, you know, um, places like this, like this is the reason why they was trying to create an issue because it wasn't an issue. Not with us. They were just trying to say that we had control over too much stuff. They were trying to shake things up because they needed control over here. And the only way you're going to have control over here is if you first control the trade. That's where the power at. Them, uh, the opportunity to, to, have, um, um, to have a trial. Um, and so this kind of environment was very hostile uh, to anyone. I mean, in, in the minds of the mob, they were guilty until proven innocent. Did that change how you operated the Underground Railroad around here after that? That sort of changed, changed a little bit, how we op operate the Underground Railroad. But we, uh, we always had a certain means. If you, see, one thing you never heard people talk about, why do they call it Underground Railroad? Anybody ever thought about why they call it the Underground Railroad? We ain't had no underground railroads. We had subways in New York, and that wasn't back there during the day. How this thing came That's about, they did pick a slave sitting on back of a, a train going into Canada under the border. Now, if you look at most plantations, what runs by most plantations? Railroads and rivers. So a lot of your slaves started to escape through railroads and all that kind of stuff. Tied them on the bottom of, 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 of real cars, uh, understanding how it was. So a lot of your your slaves escaped from the Underground Railroad by railroad. A lot of the message, you take a lot of the slaves that worked on the railroad, told, gave message about what was going on. Like they, when they hit, it won't be long, I'll be gone, and all this. They actually told a message when they were working on the railroad. You know what? It's important that mm -hmm. he brought that up because that's another thing that I found out that um, the existing railroads that our ancestors had in the past before foreigners arrival. Remember how they came out with the song I've been working on the railroad and all the rest of that stuff, the Levy song. Um, I showed you all this, but this was another indicator that they were building a railroad that was adjacent to the existing railroad, but had to reroute it. So it won't go through the same mounds and mountains as it did in the past. We routed so it could stay above ground versus going inside of what we would call tunnels. Uh, but it was mounds and mountains. Um, and that video, and I had to bring this up. Please remind me, I got to bring this up so I can show you. I have footage and I have photos of these areas, particular areas that are still open right now with railroad tracks already there. But notice how they sent us to build the railroad tracks. To manipulate, I mean, not manipulate, to uh, uh, replicate what we already had that was already existing, that was already laid down all across the Americas. Just keep in mind that the trade that originally happened prior to any foreigner's arrival, arrival did happen by way of the waterways. But it also happened by train. And I want you to think about that, because how did the militia get to Tulsa, Oklahoma so fast? If they didn't, if they couldn't do it by course. Now we talking 1900s, top of 1900s. The militia got there the next day. How did that happen? What transportation did they use? Now let's back up a little bit. Again, how did the company, the militia, uh, the Richmond, Virginia militia go from Richmond, Virginia to Southampton, Virginia? By way of train. 
by way of train. This happened a long time ago. Now we back up a little bit. Some people are going to state that the people that were shipped from here to West Africa was all done by way of sailboats. But not all. I'm going to I'm going to let you know it didn't happen by all boats. Because a lot of people couldn't afford a boat because it had to be built by somebody. Somebody had to pay for that. What was existing that they could take? What was another way? Train. Train. Now, they led us to believe that sailboats, excuse me, correction, correction, that uh, um, uh, cargo ships were existing for a long time, and that's a lie. Cargo ships didn't start coming about commercially until the end of the 1850s, until the end of the 1850s. Prior to that, wherries, skiffs, rowboats, sailboats. That's too slow to come from West Africa to the Americas. Longer than a 90-day trip just to get there. What's a faster route? What's a faster route? I also showed you, uh, what video was that? Uh, oh, um, on my, uh, on one of my videos on Harriet Tubman and the, um, Underground Railroad. No, no. I said, uh, Harriet Tubman, something about slave ship. Damn, I forgot the name of that video. But I was showing you then how it will be impossible to take the Atlantic straight across because you got the Ocean Giants there. Even in Pacific. So if it was impossible for you to cross, then how else would you get there? If you knew that a railroad was existing that take you places even outside of the Americas, wouldn't you want to replicate that and make it modernized in order for you all to travel even outside of the United States still? Of course. In order to control the trade, of course. Again, that's before we had trains that was operated by coal. Again, it was called pneumatic. That's floating on air. How did that happen? That type of technology happened in the 1700s, Dane? Yes. Now nah, the steamboats came right before the uh the cargo ships. The steamboats came late. Yes, pneumatic. That's right, pneumatic. That's how you that's how you spell it. Mm -hmm. Magnets. There you go. Instinct magnets. That's a yep, yep. That type of, that type of technology was out then, and those people were moving around freely. Yeah, before electromagnetic. It was air. Floating on air to make that stuff move. Now, remember, when they first started coming out with them trains, the, tr the coal had to be burnt in order for, you know, uh, to keep the fire, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, to keep the engine moving, right? Now, before, before that, you're going to also say, that they had the steamboats, the steam engines. But take a look at what happened before the steam engines. Right, for combustion. Before that, uh -huh, air pressure. Right now, right now, right now, an engine can't move without air, right? Right now. If I go, I'm telling you, if I take, if I go outside right now and get in my Hellcat, right? And I take apart my, um, I take apart my airbox. I could drive that car. But if my engine is not getting air, I won't be able to drive that car. That engine will lock up.
That's right now. Oh, it's going to overheat quickly. <laughs> we talk about quick. If it ain't getting no air, Mopar, you know better than that. We ain't going to make it down the street. I tapped that gas one time. The whole thing going down. I'm going to call Mopar and try to explain to them what happened. What did you do? I ain't do nothing. Any mods? No. They're going to mess around and find out their engine ain't getting no air. I'm in trouble. That's not coming up under the warranty. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that, no, not, I'm talking about more than just take the intake off. I'm talking about stop that engine from breathing. <laughs> like, you stop a Mopar engine from breathing or any engine from breathing, you in trouble. If that engine don't get no air, it ain't moving. I'm trying to tell you. So again, to go back, before the combustions and all that, right? But go back, steamboats, go back. What was it? Yeah, I'm glad I set this up. I'm glad I set this up. I'm about to put that video out. Uh -huh, I'm taking notes. I got this. Uh, that's going to be fun for me. And I'm going to show you the pneumatic transit. This is going to surprise you. You're going to be like, what the hell? And we talking years ago. <laughs> and they had this out. And nobody knew. Nobody. And this brother right here, as of eight, uh, I don't know how old, but he up there in age, and he don't know that them trains was underground here. He don't know that. It doesn't mean that the trains was underground. Okay. <laughs> what, well, well, the trains was above ground the whole time? Show me the route. Because I could, I'm telling you, I could show you the route right now that they utilize. I got the map. I got two of them, in fact. And these, matter of fact, and here's another thing. Certain um, telegraph communication companies use these same routes. Believe it or not, they putting up their towers in the same areas. Now, later on down, you're going to start seeing those um, wind fields the same way. Soon. I'm sure that's happened in a certain areas, but the wind feels strong. With, with the wind turbines, that's strong. Nah, see, that's what they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you the new man of transit 1868 was way before. How to get there? Michelle, how to get there? If it was an operation in 1868, they're going to give it to some white man. How did it get there? We ain't talking about one area. We talking about the entire landmass of America. How? Who built that? We ain't just talking about New York because they're going to tell you New York. How? How? Again, it wasn't just one area. It wasn't just one state. We, you're going to see. I'm going to show you. I am definitely got to put that out. I'm glad. I'm glad we're talking about that. Lining right up. No, that did you? <laughs> yeah. Action work on that railroad. That's what a lot of your songs came from. Tell old John, won't be long. We be going on home. Look out. Yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> like a message hidden in plain sight. Yeah, that's right, a message. Just like down on that river there. They would say that you could tell when a movement was going to go. When they started singing, won't be long, so I'll be gone. Swing low, cherry yo. Oh, Joe, getting out here. They would t actually t t pick a message was in the song of when the railroad, underground railroad was in movement. They tell them. It tells you the song. It's written in the song. <laughs> so a popular story in the 1990s was that African-Americans used quilts to not only uh, 
give signals about the Underground Railroad, whether it was safe it's to tell flee, stories. What I, whatever, where to meet, uh, what the path was, and that people would be putting these quilts out telling these stories. Now, that's true. And I remember going to an Underground Railroad conference and in early 2000 and asking some of my colleagues, what is this all about? I've never heard of this particular story. And they didn't know either. I had never uncovered any That's very true. any quilts ever in all the research I had done. And um, and I should say it was maybe in the mid-1990s, early 2000 that that came out. Because this was about in 2005, 2006, I was at a conference where we were talking about this. And about a year or two later, uh, one of my colleagues published an article really uncovering the myth that it started out by this author as a children's story and then it became popular and then there was this exhibit this traveling exhibit debut at the smithsonian <laughs> a big book full colored all these things and it was all a lie um uh -uh. and uh -uh. If Smith, no, 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 no. If Smithsonian got it, it's the truth. The Smithsonian wouldn't grab nothing if it ain't the truth, unless they just want to put their name on it and see money opportunity. That could be true too. That could be possible. But those quotes is actually true. I know that for a fact uh, because my grandmother did them quotes, and it was a lot of stories that she like. They actually painted pictures in them quotes. Not just, oh, okay, here's a way to go to the Underground Railroad, just what they what type of mood they were in at that time. I can recall that. I see, and my grandmother was born around 19, that's the 1930s. So I'm sure she got that from her mother as well. Those quilts and you know, I I mean as far as learning how to do that, sewing is concerned. I know for a fact that that's definitely something that happened. A lot of those a lot of those quotes were being told. I mean, with stories being told, like there was another way of painting a picture. And my grandmother was into painting, by the way. She painted her own pictures. In fact, we still kept her, her work. She has published articles and published um, books as well. I'm going to keep that to myself. But yes, my grandmother did a lot of publishing as far as our history is concerned. I guess that's another reason why I'm involved in this stuff, too. I just thought about that just now. But my grandmother was heavily invested in that part. That's how I know for a fact that that's real. We we kept those quilts, and uh, that's not a lie. That's the truth. That actually did happen, and she did that by hand. I saw her do some of them. That's not a lie. And I still encounter a lot of people who have heard about and believe the the quilt myth. But the the issue about the Underground Railroad is that if you did something all the time and the same way, people would see. Petersburg in the antebellum period had about 4,000 people who were black in that city. And there were a lot of whites in that city who did not want their property to, to leave. That meant, in some of their cases, that meant the difference between poverty and wealth, between being able to eat and not being able to eat. Okay. And so they, they held on to their slaves. Um, with all their might. And and so the issue really is that if somebody is leaving, uh, all the documents show that whites had, the cities hired night watchmen. They invested a lot of money in trying to ensure that those enslaved people did not leave. So there was so much effort. There was so much was it that many of them? invested in trying to make was sure it that, many that night these watchers? enslaved people did not leave. That if you had one location... Yeah, if, if they this is another leave, reason why you know that our people didn't... Uh, the slave masters, at so-called, did not send out the people that were working for them to go fight in these wars. Straight up. Like, I mean, we know that for a fact. I mean, that, that's their livelihood. You are going to lose your business by not having employees. So of course they're not going to send them out to the wars. They're always helping free yes. blacks. Yes. And they would and but see, again, with her being a, a, a student of Afro, I mean, of basically, yeah, Afro-American studies, she's going to regurgitate the story as if it was only white slave masters. And that's a lie. That's the lie right there. 
In fact, they weren't the majority of the landowners on top of that, especially back at that time. We're talking Nat Turner and them. They did not have full control over the agriculture at that time. That did not happen until later. Uh, 1866 was the first time that they put out the um, the uh, 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 the civil rights. And then you, then you had those land acts that followed where the lands were being confiscated from our people. But I'm talking about prior to that, we had control over it all. So it wasn't just strictly so-called whites. You can't say that. As far as the skin complexion is concerned, maybe status, but that's a whole nother story. Because then we got to pinpoint if that person that's claiming that they're white by way of status is either of color or, you know, of European descent. Nobody's going to investigate that because they're just running with that as a black and white thing, meaning their skin complexion. When it was never, ever, ever had nothing to do with their skin complexion. And I showed you that the term white started in Maryland and Maryland is white beside Virginia. And of course, they ran with each other. As far as those laws. But that status of white, again, does not strictly mean that they had control over the lands based off of that status. That, that's not the case. Some people didn't get involved in having that status stuff. Some people ain't care to get involved with that government. Not everybody agreed to this. They didn't have a stronghold on everybody. Again, you never mentioned how they was paying the arm and the leg to the lynchmen or the, the lynch mob. I mean, uh, no, she said the night watchers, same thing. How? How? Federal Reserve notes came later. So you talking about coins? What you talking about? Promissory notes? What you talking about? They spent a lot of money. Right. Okay, so they spent a lot of money to stop people from leaving, but yet going to turn around and can't handle their own business as far as controlling their employees from leaving. Their employees can leave at any time if they're being mistreated. If they can see that they can get paid somewhere else, they will do that. Leave and go somewhere else. You can't control them. Regardless of what type of contract you talk talking about. She also said it was a police state. That's a lie. Police ain't exist. Until later on. You only had sheriffs and U.S. Marshals. Is that what you're talking about? The sheriff office, again, did not have a whole infantry of, police, of, of, of uh, sheriffs. The U.S. Marshals was one or two per county. And the U.S. Marshals were in control of the sheriffs of each county. They were ahead of them. That was prior to CIA, FBI, and all the rest of that. The U.S. Marshals were the head honchos when it came to so-called police work at that time. So if you put that together and say straight up uh, that um, uh, the whites were mad because they couldn't keep control over the so-called blacks, you, young lady, are regurgitating a lie. No matter what you, what you know, you got your degree at what, you know, Norfolk State. And, nah, and, and, you, and you studied Afro-American studies. That's all a lie. You're regurgitating a lie. Areas where free blacks concentrated, they were under surveillance all the time. Someone told me again, years ago how, that how, had- listen, they were under surveillance all the time. How again, it wasn't no CIA. It wasn't no central intelligence. They ain't have no form of intelligence. How were they doing that? You can't control everybody. If everybody was working. How is one or two U.S. Marshals going to do anything? Three or four sheriffs going to do anything? If everybody said, forget it, let's today get up and leave, they can't do nothing. And don't think for a split second that they didn't have weapons too. And that's another thing they try to throw out there, as if our people ain't had no weapons. Yes, we did. Our people was getting raped or something. That, That happened every so often. I'm talking about they tried to make it seem like they was purposely getting that stuff done and that's how the racial mixing happened. 
that's a lie. And I showed you that uh, in that video on the black and white status. That's what that was. Anti-miscegenation law. And that's why they came up with that term. White. 18, I mean, 17, either 1751 or 1781. I forgot which year it was. But it was people of darker hue marrying folks your complexion, young lady. There was no laws against that. Mixing happened very rarely. That wasn't all over the place. Everybody coming up with these little stories and people can't verify that. It's just, again, word of mouth. And just because you went to a university don't mean a university know the truth. A lot of these universities that was created was our original schools that we had control of because originally before that, they were churches. Churches. And they had pastors and preachers in charge of it. So not just the Smithsonian holding the record, so are the universities. But you regurgitating information that does not have a backbone. Just a story. They had intelligence over there. No, they didn't. They, they were looking at them. How? With binoculars? I mean, they ain't throwing up no spy planes or nothing, and they got cameras everywhere. H how are they watching everybody? You're not making sense. If you wanted to be believable, you making it hard for me to believe. As a thousand eyes. How many eyes does the daytime have? And so when you think that people see a lot, even at night, and especially in small towns or small cities or communities, um, there can't be a lot of things happening at the same time or in the same way without, it, uh, um, uh, without some suspicion emerging. That That's an assumption. These individuals are guilty. That's an assumption. Immediately she made an assumption. What? Listen to that. It has a thousand eyes. How many eyes does the daytime have? And so when you think that people see a lot, even at night, and especially in small towns or small cities or communities, um, there can't be a lot of things happening at the same time. Come on in now. In the same way. You, you assuming. It, uh, um, uh, without some suspicion emerging that maybe these individuals are guilty. Nah, when she, I she's assuming. That's an assumption. Posted in places, that ain't true. And I own some of the properties. It still feel like it's the right of passage to me that I've still run an underground railroad of history. We are still discovering the Underground Railroad, through history. I, my museum is in the route of the Underground Railroad. It's a rite of passage. They have told me, you gotta look out. I am, this is my responsibility, what I'm doing right now. I was chosen to do this. In 1861, three bulls said I. Hold on one second, real quick. I wanna, I wanna, I want to also go into, uh, and I want to make sure I'm doing that. I'm going to go into why it was considered the Underground Railroad, because people think when they hear underground, it's basically like um, secretive. Like it's not, it's being kept, you know, quiet, tight knit. Like, you know, and then some people will say, well, it's because it was underground. And I'm telling you that not all of it was underground. The majority of it can be above ground. But some of it was through tunnels and mounds or tunnels in mounds and mountains. That's just how it worked. And that was the original route. So if you're talking about prior to them capturing our people and making them work on the railroad purposely in order to reroute the trade to get, you know, uh, uh, to get the government in control of how the trade was originally ran, 
We talking about a long time in every single state having to get that done. This is the reason why they were just locking up our people left to right for no reason. For no reason at all. That was the agenda. Oh, well, we need other people to do it. And they're not going. Yeah, you know I mean, as some sometimes they will hire certain people. You know, they will hire journeymen to watch over them, journeymen, supervisors, stuff like that. Besides that, they got people that were locked up, inmates out there working on the railroad, on the new railroad. I want y'all to look at this picture real quick. Notice how you see this railroad, right? And this one right here, and they intersect with each other. Look, look real close. Don't you see another railroad track? Let's cover it up. Right here. On his right side, right here with my mouse at. This is another railroad track. Covered up. That's not being used. And look how you look at the direction it's going. I'm just saying. Let me let me drop a bomb. They ran these tracks adjacent to the ones that they saw and rerouted them again so they could control the trade. I'm going to pause right here because I didn't know I was, man, hey, matter of fact, let me clap it up for y'all. I, I just looked at it. I was having so much fun. I ain't know I was live streaming this long. I did not know that. I look at the time. I said, oh, crap. It's been four hours. Uh, let me let me break these up because I don't want I don't want this to. I want this to sink in. I think four hours was too long, but I appreciate that that y'all watch this. But goddamn, when somebody try and watch the replay, <laughs> this is four hours long. Um, I was not looking at. I don't look at how many people watching. I don't. I don't look at, you know, how long it's been. I just strictly go in, and you know, I got to get better with that because I did not know we was gone going on for this long. Almost four hours long here. Five minutes to four hours. Man, but yeah, I'm, I enjoy this type of stuff right here, man, when, especially when it comes to our history. But again, I just want y'all to look at this. This is the train track that they, uh, the, the train track, the railroad leading over there that's basically going this route. But what about this one? I'm just saying, covered up with grass and, you know, uh, I'm just saying, like, existing train tracks were there. Don't let Google and them tell you that the pneumatic transit happened in 1868. As far as like being in play. Then you got to ask yourself, well, how to get there? Why do you wait till 1868 to tell you? Are right, we good now? Are they confusing the two? Are they trying to say that this is the pneumatic transit and not this? I'm going to answer those questions, too. I'm going to make sure I put all that together. And uh and and put that out as a brand fresh new video with the video with the, the stuff that I have already on this. I did a lot of research on this already. And um a lot of people are unfamiliar with that term. They they I mean they hear pneumatic, they think air. I understand that, but a lot of people didn't know about the pneumatic transit and how that tra I'm talking about pneumatic transit system and how it worked. That type of technology existed then. I also showed you. I, uh, well, not showed you all because that was actually getting ready to come out this year. I think we're going to hold that off for January. We're going to show you as well as far as um, how uh, we communicated back then without the uh, without the use of, you know, telephones, for example. Like, how did these people, for example, if they fought in the Civil War, as an example, how did these people know where to go? How were they able to communicate back and forth? All right, this area is safe. This area is enemy territory. Like, how were they able to report it back to base? Now, a lot of people are going to say Morse code. How did that Morse code travel? That was telegraph communication, and that's a form of radio, and I told you guys that that existed back then. I also told you that I want you to look out for what I'm about to release because I'm going to show you. Remember what they were saying that the Russians were listening in? I'm going to show you how the Russians were listening in. How were they able to tap into that line of communication? I showed you... Who is in control of the internet? Who is in control of telegraph communication? I showed you that in another live stream that has something to do with the airplanes. So I know I might have to bring that up. As far as remember that time when they, uh, they grounded all the airplanes because of the 5G was um, interfering with um, their interface as far as their uh, user interface system dealing with the planes. 
And I was telling you back then, I, I kind of, you know, shout out to Chingy because he posted that on his Instagram too. Shout out to Chingy. Um, but I'm going to have to bring all that back up. I gave you the companies, the original names and all of that. So I'm going to have to put all that together because I want you to understand that this type of technology existed prior to any foreigner's arrival. We already had it. This is not a game, ladies and gentlemen. Our people were not living in no goddamn TPs when we built mounds, mountains, and goddamn castles. And not only that, we had the technology. Not just the technology in the pyramids, but the technology that we still utilize it right now, just in a more modernized way. I'm going I'm to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm, for, I'm telling you, if it wasn't for us, it wouldn't be no them. I'm going to just say it that way. If it wasn't for us, it wouldn't be no them. I want to um, I want to shout out to uh, Goddess Wild Red. Thank you for your donation, sister. I appreciate that. Dimples the Lion has been a member for eight months in a it's row. Up. I appreciate that. Cut. Thank you for becoming a member. And um, Chosen Reality. Yeah, Chosen Reality. Thank you for the donation. She putting she putting out the birds. Set it on fire. I appreciate that, sister. Turtle Island. Oh, but man, he gifted another membership. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you for looking out. And um, Dark Moon Goddess, what up, sis? Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that, sister. It's up. And Reggie F, thank you for becoming a member. Um, Lauren, thank you for becoming a member, sister. I appreciate that. Sherelle Williams, thank you for your donation. I appreciate that. Joseph Bryant, thank you for becoming a member as well. Hold up. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, uh, I know I got it. I got it. I'm trying to hurry up and pull that up right now. All right. And it says. Okay. You said, keep going. We need you. Lolando Morris, I appreciate that. Thank you for your donation on Cash App. I appreciate that. I'm not about to stop. I'm definitely going to keep going. All right, Brian Reed, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for the Cash Apps as well, you all. Those of you that donated to PayPal, I can't see PayPal, but I appreciate that. I wish I could have it, you know, right here, but I, I, I tried a couple of ways and I can't have it right here where I can actually see it. But I appreciate that. Um, I don't want y'all to think that I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, seeing that or appreciating that. I want y'all to understand that I, I love y'all for that, man. Thank you. You didn't have to do that. I don't ask for donations. You're doing that out of the con kindness of your heart. I thank you for that. And I mean that. Uh, let me drop a bomb for, hold up. This just popped up on my side. Uh, OH, thank you for your donation. OH and... Uh, Hill, is that Hill? Yeah, that's Hill, Hill Wisdom. Oh, what's up, brother? <laughs> what's up, brother? You must have been in the cut listening. I appreciate it's that, brother. I'm a, let me double up real quick. Big don't know. What up, Hill? I appreciate that, brother. Uh, something else just popped up. Oh, Celeste, hey. Set it on fire. It's fire. I appreciate that, don't know. Thank you. Oh, sis. Oh, I can't tell. It's the way you got. Take another picture. I apologize, sister. Take another picture. Because I can't tell because you you in the cut. <laughs> you, you in the cut. I apologize, sister. I apologize. Now that I know, I know for a fact from this day forward. That sister right there. But I'm telling you, like, the way that picture sat, like, I got to. You, you should see me. I got glasses on and I'm squinting. I can't quite see it. You know, uh, but I, I appreciate that, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Rhythm City Live. What up, brother? It's up. Thank you for the donation as well. Now, don't be laughing, y'all, because I make mistakes. Don't be laughing. I apologize about that. You know, sometimes I be trying to look at the picture real hard and I can't really see it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, thank you, sister. I appreciate that. Shout out to all of you all. Uh, that joined the live stream and watched it all the way through. I know some of you all had to drop off because it's late. You got work in the morning. You got to take the, the kids and, the, you know, I appreciate that. 
Hopefully you all come back and watch the rest of it. Cause you know, uh, this thing was four hours long. <laughs> this thing was over. Hey, this thing was over four hours long, man. You was, you know, you were watching a master at work. I, I was over here working, man. And we ain't even finished, so I'm probably gonna have to uh, pull up again. What's today? Is today Friday? Oh, no, what's today? Uh, oh no, today Thursday. Damn, should I pull up back to back? Cause I gotta, I know I'm gonna have to get some work done. I'm gonna have to get some work done. Let me let me see before I make a promise. Let me see how that you know how I can manage that. And um, yeah, cause I remember. Yeah, man, let me let me see. Let me let me check around. Let me make sure everything's straight. And then uh we could probably follow up with this one. I, I know where we at and everything. I'm gonna stop it right there. Um and then we could come back to that because there's a lot more information I want you all to soak in and take your time on. Sheesh, we ain't even get it was only 42 43 minutes we got into this thing. <laughs> and it's over four hours longer than the live stream, man. I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna give y'all a round of applause. Man. Come back tomorrow. All right. Today is Wednesday. Thank you, EJ. No, yeah, don't be making fun of me because I be losing track of the days. Don't be making fun of me. You know. But yeah, I appreciate that. Oh, okay, 1500 at this time of night. What y'all, y'all need to be in the bed. What y'all doing up this late? Huh? What y'all, I'm just messing with y'all. I'm messing with y'all. I'm going to pull up, pull up later on today. Y'all want me to pull up later on today? And we can finish this out? Um... I'm probably going to be able to do that, you know, and it's, you know, and I remember I said yesterday I was going to pull up between like four and snow. What I say? Six and I forgot what time I said, but um, I was a little late. I know that for a fact. I was a little late, you know, uh, I ain't going to say what I had to do because my wife listening and, um, you know, I ain't trying to get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to get in trouble because it was for her benefit and our benefit. I'm going to just keep it professional, you know, PG. That's all. That's all I need to say. So later on this evening, I'm going to get everything gathered up, but we're going to go over this and some other things that's correlating with that. I already took notes that I'm going to make sure I'm going to put that information out as far as the uh, pneumatic transit. We're going to go over the underground railroads. I'm going to tell you about that technology that happened back then. All in four. And that's going to be good because I see that there's other, you know, other things that correlate that we already have coming out that's going to correlate all together that we could go over it again. It's going to be in a documentary format. But then we could go over it again during a live stream, better explain it, you know, for those that didn't, you know, catch it the first two times or whatever, with it being a documentary. So I like that part. Long as y'all cool with it, I'm cool with it. You know, so I want to say six Eastern time. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do a six Eastern time, but it's definitely going to be late on. I'm going to see you all tonight or this evening, rather, because I mean, it's already next day. For a lot of you, maybe not Cali. It ain't the next day for Cali yet, but it's the next day for the East Coast and Central. So, set it on fire. I appreciate it's that. Y'all yeah, take care. Thank you all for all the love and those that donated. I appreciate that as well. Those that's watching, I appreciate that as well. You click the like button. That's showing support as well. You commenting. That's showing support as well. All of that is support, and I appreciate that. And hey. I don't take that for granted. I literally appreciate that. And I mean that. Y'all take care. I'm going to see y'all later on. Why though? I'm just here to make you think. So damn. Yeah. Sub up, like up.